Boom. What up, fam? Anthony Johnson here today, co-founder and CEO of the Redman Group, founder of 21 Studios and the 21 Convention, aka President Johnson, President Dream. This episode's titled Making the Manosphere Great Again. I'll be joined with two guests today. And it's going to be John Anthony, who was on the show about a month ago from John Anthony Lifestyle. Find him on YouTube. And Alex from Playing With Fire. Uh, I'm new to him, but he's uh, highly recommended and vouched for by John Anthony. He's based in Miami, Florida, and also has a big YouTube channel for uh, dating relationships and becoming better with women. And you can find him on YouTube at uh, Playing With Fire or Alex Playing With Fire. Links in the description after the show. So without further ado, welcome to today's show. The Red Man Group is now in session. Now, let me bring these guests on. Alex, playing with fire. What's up, man? Yo, how's it going? Thank you for having me on. Yeah, man. I appreciate your time today coming on. Where'd John go? He was just here a second ago. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, it's weird. We'll get him back in a second, I'm sure. Technical difficulties or something. Oh. That's, what, but, that's what happens when you live in a third world shithole. You uh, have technical difficulties. Yeah. Pros and cons, <laughs> man. Pros and cons. Right. So for the fans of my channel who are not familiar with you, uh, talk to me about your channel. You got about 44,000 subscribers. And what do you, what kind of content do you do there? And what's your history of being a dating coach uh, and relationship coach for men? Yeah, so we mainly do. Uh, we started with a focus on online dating because that's what I initially was doing. I was uh, I used to work a corporate job. Not a lot of people know this, but I was a sales trainer. And so I worked 50, 60 hours a week. And I really did not have time for like, you know, going out to bars and shit. So I did a lot of online dating. I started applying a lot of sales concepts because I had like some of the best sales trainers, I think, in the industry training me. So I started applying a lot of those concepts to online dating. And then I started a Facebook group just to get some validation from dudes on the Internet and share my Larry reports. And that kind of just exploded on its own with no marketing for me. And then uh, due to uh, some poor decisions. What, years, what years was that going on during? Like what's so this the was, timeline? This was 2016. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. And then the company went bankrupt overnight, basically, just because some of the upper management made some bad decisions. And so I was out of a job like overnight, basically me and like hundreds of people. So I decided to run with playing with fire. And then we started the YouTube channel. We started the website. We started the app and all that stuff. And um, but then the channel has evolved since then. We just do a lot of like we recently had Elliot Holson, who I know is a speaker at your convention, talking yeah. about like fitness and masculinity. So we, we go savage, man. I love Elliot. He's a good guy. Yeah, it was funny because my mom watched that live stream because she watches a good amount of my content. Uh, and after that, she texted me. She's like, I don't know how I feel about this guy. He's uh, <laughs> He's got some interesting opinions. But yeah, I like Elliot a lot. After that, she- what's your uh, background? So, John, welcome to the show. Uh, technical hey, what's difficulty, up? I guess. Yeah. What's your background uh, with each other? How do you guys know each other? What's the uh, what's the connection there between you guys? Wingmen? Do you guys uh, you did roasting no, prods the- together? Alex is a former fuck buddy of. Uh, <laughs> okay. nice. I, have since, I have since friends on John. Yeah, I saw him. I saw him like come onto the scene. How long ago was it? Like three years ago? Four years ago? It was 2016, so five years ago. Five years ago. Okay, yeah. So I saw him come out, and I and I always give everyone like a fair chance, even though like 99.9% of the time it's it's shit. Like I'll go through their products, I'll go through their content, and it was like the first time in a long time where a guy was like giving no be uh, uh, no bullshit practical advice. And I saw that a lot of the stuff was like really good and in, and in some cases better than what I was doing, which, which again, hasn't happened in a long time. So I like private message him and I was like, you know, full humility, like, hey, I, I, I'm pretty good at night game and day game and stuff. I see you're doing some texting online stuff uh, better than I am, I think, you know, it, well, in some cases for sure. And I was like, I want to come in. I was like, I want to, um, you know, trade value and, and show you what I can do with cold approach. There's, a, there's my girlfriend in Brazil that Modern Life Dating says he has screenshot proof that she's an escort. Come down oh here. We're, we're going to, we're going to, we have like thousands of pictures from like over the, we've been dating for like over a year. I might make it, if he tries to like release, because I, somebody hit, sent to CoffeeZilla too. Somebody sent like full fake screenshots that I, I was able to like disprove it in 20 ways, but I talked to CoffeeZilla for like two hours and he's like, people are showing me all this like screenshot proof. I'm like, bullshit. Because he, he said what was being sent in screenshots. I'm like, never happened. He's like, oh, they said they worked for your company and they, and they can't show the screen cap of the, of the screenshots because it was on a corporate phone. I've never had a corporate phones for employees. It's ridiculous. And he, the person couldn't say that, who their name was. And like, I know there's like limited people in my company. I'm like very close to them. And it, it, like I was able to disprove in like 20 ways. But if if people try to like put out fake screenshots and stuff like that, like well, I'll, I'll release a video without, with thousands of pictures with her. Like I have no problem defending that kind of stuff. Yeah. I like how these uh, our enemies are such frauds that they they bang fat women and then they're ashamed of their fat women. And you just bring your hot girlfriend like live on the show, like just absolutely receipt. Yeah. 
And we we had we, we wrote on the whiteboard how many threesomes we've had since May. She had never had one before uh, before nice. meeting me. We've and been dating. We had like thirty four. It was thirty four. That's from yeah, what we can remember. So thirty four new different girls. And I had a bunch with, with some not a lot, but with with uh, with some other girls. So, yeah. but I think like like definitely over twenty percent of my ladies in the past year were. We're from New well, let's, let's get back to talking about how uh, how often you found my content. Right. I, I like that. Yeah. I like that topic a little more. Yeah. yeah so, a bit, but basically, I, I was almost like uh, like hitting you up a lot, like because it's really exciting for me. I've looked at the whole system. Like I always like when I explain the system, it's like here's red. The, the color red is like in need of a lot of optimization. Yellow is working at a sufficient level, but could be optimized. And then green is like optimized. And I'm trying to get guys to that green state. But in reality, I look at it always as all yellow, like indefinitely. So when Alex was able to show some stuff that was that was better than what I was doing, that's how I got to the level I was at in the first place. I was trying to find people that are better than me at running rotations at, at night game, at, at day game, at texting, at, at um, you know, running their date, like every little part of the system, who's doing it better and why, and then split test. And if the performance wins with a not with sufficient data, it's a scientific method, right? And it's always the system's always open to change. So whenever when someone's like, hey, Corey Wayne says. Uh, you should be call or you should be um, not not planning the same date in the same hangout because it looks needy. And then I know, like from data, that planning it during the hangout when the vibe is up and when you can uh, dynamically answer logistics and objections, it's infinitely better than starting from scratch over text. Is like one example. But yeah, long story short, um, so we 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 became uh, buddies that way, and then I went out to visit him and. Um, in LA, he's LA, living in Miami yeah. now, but by the time he was living in LA, night one, like he ended up going home a little early. We were at a strip club, but he went home, he went home a little early. I came back a little bit later with a stripper and he heard me banging the stripper. And then you said I banged like 10 girls in like three days at your house that you witnessed. Nice. nice. It was a lot. I mean, I didn't witness, witness. I wasn't like hiding in the closet, jerking yeah. off in the cock. But, yeah. uh, this is animal yeah, stuff. It was a lot. I mean, we, uh, yeah, we had a lot of, two, uh, whatever, two double dates and shit like that also. It was a good time. I mean, I remember afterwards, my roommate would then wound up going crazy. But uh, when he, yeah. he's, like, he's like, it sounds like there was like a frat party in here or something like that. It's just like so many condoms and beer bottles. And yeah, yeah that's I mean, how real life is. When you're good with women, this is how real life is. It's not this fucking, this fake bullshit that we have to keep roasting on the internet. These guys who hide behind computer screens indefinitely with fat women that are behind the screens too. <laughs> it's just disgusting, you know? It's it's such, there's such, the, the manosphere is such a shit show of frauds. I'm really happy that you guys are helping clean that shit up. I and mean, it's been going on for fucking decades. I've been in it since 2005 when I found it. I was a kid. I was in high school. What? Yeah. What, what shocks me? Big... Go ahead. No, no. Uh, ahead, just John. real quick. Like, like what shocks me is like um, how opposite a lot of these guys' lives are. It's literally like polar opposite. Like like yeah. you you did a really good job. I watched some of the Donovan roast finally last night, uh, yeah. like 3 a.m. But I saw you like going like through. Yeah, like systematically. But, like literally a guy that's like, don't date girls that aren't stunning don't get married uh don't mm -hmm. let the girl call the shots and then literally does the exact opposite yep. behind the scenes and and, yep. he, and i've showed that time and time again where these guys yep. put out a bunch of claims and no there's no fact checking that's like that's what i feel like yep. i provide i'm not just like it's not just he said she said it's this like, is a really this. this is a really interesting point you bring up john because i don't know what the exact term is in psychology i don't maybe there is one maybe there isn't but it's like an inverse projection it's not just regular projection. It's like the diametric, exact opposite inverse of what they're actually doing. So Dramatic my wife, oil. my wife surrendered Literally. control to me. It's the opposite. She fucking own, owns these guys' asses and like, yeah, they, I, I don't fuck fat women. I don't fuck women over the forty wall. No, he, this guy married a woman over the forty wall. And fucks <laughs> exclusively yeah. fat women. So. Yeah, but maybe, but maybe he doesn't fuck his wife. Maybe he just uh, maybe not. Yeah, I mean that, that's maybe, actually probably next to each other. I would say the pickup community is just as bad, if not possibly worse. Mm -hmm. As yeah, monster community, it's ridiculous, honestly. Yeah, I think in outside the pickup community, it might be worse, it might not be. The issue is it's even harder to tell because they start talking about issues that are not just banging chicks. Now it's like men's rights guys or red pill guys, and it becomes more theory based. And you know, Frollo Tomasi, the fraud father, is a great example. He hides behind being married and stuff, right? I don't, have, I don't have to go bang chicks. The reality is, he can't. He could not have his life depended on it with a gun to his head. It's not going to happen. <laughs> and people don't understand that. And because he doesn't have to go out and shot, he doesn't have to have any results. He's married, right? But he it's knows about hypergamy. Life. He knows yeah, about the exactly. theory of hypergamy. So that's good enough, right? So you get these, exactly. And you get these super advanced keyboard jockeys who are just losers in real life. Like complete fucking gamma male, secret king, fucking losers. 
with hair extensions. Yeah. Well, that's why that's why I went I went like pretty hardcore, and I was already in a bad mood when I made that Ryan and Rollo response that I put up. So it's kind of oh, fitting. Oh, let's, I drove, let's have a look. Let's have a look at that. Here we go. I, I yeah, drove in whole, the rage. Dude, you have a whole playlist of roasts. I love it. Yeah, I, I love it. Like, like, roast like, look at all this. There's just like there's like thirty of them, right? They just keep oh, 32. Yeah. 32. <laughs> there's, well, there's more. I, I didn't even comprehensively. It was like the ones that came to mind. So yeah, there's this is excellent. more. You deserve a medal. I'm going to give you a presidential medal of roasting or something. <laughs> you deserve it. I'm going to get one made. It's funny how you like formalize it. You're like, the president of the manosphere has yep. deemed, hereby deemed you like, excommunicated. Fraud. You're fucking fraud. It needs to be done, man. It's order. You know, it's funny and it's tongue in cheek, but there's a reality behind that's really gross and disgusting. These guys prey on wounded men. They rip these men off. It's snake oil bullshit. It's lies, deception, false advertising. And any other industry, you know, you could get in trouble for this shit much easier. You know, like rolling, rolling the odometer back on your car. In Florida and many other states, you can go to jail for that shit, right? If you sell the car like that, knowingly. But these guys roll the, roll the age back on their wives and the fat women and they hide all this bullshit you know, in Photoshop. Like, yeah, Co Coffeezilla did a, a video on Napoleon Hill, and I, I want to do a video on him too. But like, if you look into Napoleon Hill's history, he's he the guy that think and grow rich. Yeah, he had like, he was a career scammer. Like he, he literally had like a Napoleon Hill award where he would go up and like hand it to a president just so he could appear. It was very clever stuff just so he could appear in newsprint next to like uh, like Thomas Edison or different presidents. It's like wow. this president received the Napoleon Hill award and he like started all these fake charities. He had like a fake car repair business where the labor was like he was even financing them loans where it's like, hey, I, like pay me the interest. And, you know, so he had like all kinds of scamming going on, but he was like the father of self-help. And then like you see like all these guys that followed in his footsteps and it's all a lot of like feel good stuff. You just throw around buzzwords. You just throw around good emotions and people don't really even give a shit anymore about the results. They just care more about like this guru, like giving them these like emotional highs. Yeah. And it's all it, about and then, like pain and pleasure and all of the, yeah, pushing or being like a little cult follower, like a little, what do they call it? A sycophant or something. It's, it's yeah. definitely a big cult thing. It's like a tribe, like I'll identify with the Rolo tribe. So it doesn't matter what he says, whether it's right or wrong. There's no like rational thinking that goes into it. There's yeah. no like, critical evaluation. Like, well, this doesn't. And exist. anyone who challenges them, I don't know if you guys know this. I'll pull this up for you if I can real quick. Let's see. Hypergamy. Uh, one second. You guys will see what I'm talking about. So. This is a great video that I will pull up. Boom, boom. Uh, oh, one second. Let me pull this up. Here we go. So Sean Smith is a clinical psychologist, and he did a great video uh, going into hypergamy. You guys can see here. And this is rebroadcast on our channel. It's also on his channel. It has even more views. And all it is is a very simple, not very simple, but it's a very technical, very clinical, very scientific. Like this guy is a legit fucking 20-year clinical psychologist. And he breaks down what Rollo's version of hypergamy is, what its origin is and like sociology and shit, and then how Rollo deals with it. And he he basically just tears it apart. It's very peaceful. It's, there's no cursing or anything. <laughs> like the guy is super, a super nice guy in real life, but savage. And he's very yeah. scientific about it. And Rollo couldn't handle that. Since Sean Smith did this video, Rollo excommunicated that guy. He hates him. Now. <laughs> just because, and they had a debate right before that. And dude, Rollo got his fucking panties up in a bunch because he got owned by this guy. By science, he got owned by reason and logic and science by a guy who's. I plan, better, yeah, I, I, I plan on doing something like this, like ripping his book to shreds. Um, but yeah, I'm yeah. glad to see that someone else already did that. What yeah. were the main arguments he made that uh, he was uh, he was saying that Roll was wrong about? Uh, I'm not super familiar with the video itself. I mean, it's a pretty long, 45 minute video. But basically, he tries to encap. He does a good job, I think, encapsulating Roll's definition of hypergamy and how it's different. He makes a big point out of this. Because Rollo, I think, is trying to like latch on to the social, the sociology version of hypergamy, like marrying up. But then he's he's basically creating a new definition of it. And Rollo is very like underhanded with this. He's like brushing that under the rug. And from that, he gets to kind of run with it, right? Hypergamy. Mm -hmm. He go. He even says all the time, "I own hypergamy. I own it. I own it." And what he means is like just googling. Like if you Google it, you find his shit on it. He fucking <laughs> talks about it so much. I love all the keyboard I, scientists, all the keyboard yeah. PhDs, all the guys who like use fancy science terms. Yeah. Found on Google. Dude, but, but he really gets into the role. Role of, it's not scientifically backed is the problem. There's no science backing it and there's no right. studies that back it. And there's stuff that contraindicates it. I think that's I think that's what it, a lot of what it digs into with it. And it just pisses Rollo off because it's simple. What what's with Rollo uh, promoting all the scammers? Like 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 what really bothered me is they're like saying, Oh, you have to have uh, like real legit clout and that this it's, and that and, it, and they're coming Rolo's at me. The, Rollo's the, the scammer. 
Roller's the king's yeah. hammer. He's the king of it all. He's the head. He's the he's the secret like mafia leader of all this shit. Honestly. He's basically he's basically like the Tyler Durden equivalent in the in the red pill world. Yes, it's yes. It's like a full on clown. Guys like, like everyone, everyone worships. Guys like Donovan Shart, Donna Shart, Donna. He's basically like an underboss under Rolo. Like <laughs> Rolo is truly the king fraud of all this shit. And Donovan's not that smart. Rolo's in the right. The problem with Rolo, the fraud father, is he's much uh, clever, more clever about. It. He's cunning. He's not like this super genius that his fan, his sycophant fans think he is. That's retarded. He's like a he's guitar not, player, like a former guitar player. Yeah, but he's not du- like super dumb like Donovan. Donovan's like the slime ball used car salesman, and he's just really. <laughs> it, that's why it was so. It wasn't. Uh, it was effort. You know, I had to go through a lot of effort to produce that video. That is this three hour documentary, just roasting the shit out of him to to hell and back. But it was not too hard to figure out. You know, we had all this data available to me with Rolo. You have to fucking fine comb this shit. He's like he's very clever about it. And he's much more low key. And that's why he's been able to get away with it for so long. Donovan's a ticking time bomb now. He kind of was anyway, even before I roasted him. Now it's like, get the fuck away from him. This guy's super, super he's, fraud. He's saying his girl's body is a hard nine. And then you show or the better. picture. Or better. Yeah, or seven, better. Seven to nine. <laughs> what's, what's crazy, though, is like these guys very consistently are getting below average girls. Below, below, below. That's like the key point. Like, yeah, oh, yeah. Like, let's not, let's not like mince uh, or, or whatever, like split hairs over like a two versus a three or a four. Everyone can agree or they're below average. So what they're are they, below. you know, so what, and these, and these are supposed to be the masters, even if they're not pickup guys, yep. what is any of this red pill knowledge worth if the end product is that they end up with a below average girl? Yeah, and, and, and I watch them sit there and try to like talk shit and, and, and all this stuff. Yep. And it's like, where, where, where's that? Where's the basis behind that? I'm, I'm sitting with like countless girls that are super yep. hot that I show and they're just like behind the keyboard, like, hey guys, let's rip on him because he's making he's calling us and out for scamming. Here's what pisses me off is guys like you guys who are much more into like just banging tons and tons of women, as far as I understand. You worked for that. You worked your fucking ass yeah. for it. I know that. I understand that. Dude, I haven't done as many cold approaches and banged as many women as you have, not by a mile, but I've done a lot. I've done like six thousand cold approaches and shit like this, and it was hard. A lot of it was just being socially retarded for a long time when I was like 17, 18, 19. But at least I put in the fucking effort and the footwork. And then from there yep. I got better and better over time. And it fucking hurts, man. It's a lot of time, effort. Yeah, man. that's why. Like when like Jake Paul came on the scene, and you had like different UFC guys that were like, we put in all the blood, sweat, and tears. We're like, you know, we, we understand this shit inside out. And he picked like a bad striker, like Ben Askren, to challenge. He picked like one of the worst strikers, like a ground game guy. And then and then he actually put in work to learn some boxing. But still, the point of the matter is, you don't like come into a scene where a guy devoted his whole life to mastering a craft, and then just make up a whole bunch of. And their and their claims, and, and this is an important point too. Their claims are, have no bearing with with reality in terms of what you can really accomplish. Like someone, like I say, I closed ten percent of my phone numbers. That still gave me at the time of this recording one thousand three hundred thirty nine lays. And it, and but guys, I had a guy come on the other day. Oh, only ten percent. Like your skills must suck. It's like that's the, that. Those are the real figures. Then you have I haven't even touched on the internet marketers yet that ran like yeah. Tower Badass and Pandora's yeah. Box. But they're saying like 83% of people that get our system have their first threesome in, in the first day or two. And it, I can't compete with that. And, you know, unless I want to lie about the, the real numbers. Yeah, that's very um, true. You can't really compete with a lot the, the claims that are lies because they're so outrageous. Like get 99% of the girls that you open or something like that. Yeah, yeah. Get laid yeah, immediately. Get immediately. Right now, fate. you'll get laid. Hot chicks will immediate. come to you with no work. Jump on your dick. Yep. Perfect tense. Sure, that's, that's what Girlfriend Activation System did. They said, okay, everyone's biggest pain point is approaching and yep. getting like rejected. Let's like form it all around this, this literatica thing that came from Fifty Shades of Grey and then say, oh, the girls will just approach you. And, and it, of course, it's total BS. But guys, Every beta dude vibe. wants a girlfriend too. They always want a girlfriend. They don't want to actually do the hard work to learn how to get good with women and then maybe do something later. It's always like secretly or openly. They just want a girlfriend, girlfriend, girlfriend. I'll teach you how to get a girlfriend, even though you don't get laid anyway. So you're just going to be desperate. So they, yeah. they, they, they really, what they do, I think, is, I've seen that I think they, too. I think they study these beta males. They really study like what the pain is and then just play to that as best they can. The fitness industry does it too, right? They just study like all the bullshit these guys already believe. And then repackage mm-hmm. it and sell it like back to them. Their own shit they already believe. But like yeah, you super jack without going to the gym and without following any kind of consistent yep. in five minutes a week. Yeah. <laughs> That's nuts. Yeah. I think like my whole brand has always been, or part of it was uh, just tell the truth. And that I think that's what makes me stand out. And John as well is that like yeah. just I just say how it is. And I think a lot of people respect that because 90 that wins nowadays. The long run. By, Nowadays, by uh, being straightforward and honest, you're actually in the minority, so you stand out. Mm-hmm. 
But I can't count the number of times people get on like calls with me or email me and they say like, hey, I can sense you're one of the only guys that's that's not full of shit. I can feel all the authenticity because you can't like people are very perceptive. Like when someone doesn't know what they're talking about or someone isn't a real expert, it's like pretty obvious in most yeah. cases, unless they do a very good job of it. Like RST. It, it's obvious to you, though, to guys who suck with women, they have no idea. They're just like it's the blind leading the blind or the deaf leading the blind. It's like in this fucking yeah. circle, like a snake eating its tail. It's fucked. And then me and you, yeah. we call this shit out. And what do we get? We get the beta male police, right? Let's talk about the beta male police where they come on your channel and they're like, this is feminine. Why are you, why are you just leave me alone and focus on positive content? These little, these little fucking dorks like say all this shit. It's like, you're a loser. You're hiding behind a cartoon on YouTube. You're not real. You suck. You definitely suck with women. That's why you follow these fucking losers, these frauds. You have no idea that they're frauds because you suck with women, or at least it's linked to it. I feel kind of bad for this guy, but then he's like, then you're coming at me like, well, fuck you, man. Ban. Instant ban. I just ban all these fucking losers. Death. Well, Go yeah, the gulag. I got to start doing that. I make the mistake of debating with them. But they, I, the thing I get accused of in the comments is being needy. That's like the thing I get. Like, oh, you double texted this girl. You're needy. You're, I double text yeah. all the time. I, I said on my mentorship group last night, I said, never fucking worry about double texting again because the lead is going cold over time. And it's correct in a lot of cases to follow up naturally. And lots of times the girl's distracted when the first text comes. Mm. So like, these, like, these hard rules, like I made a video mm. where it's like, uh, going against the ideas of being a simp, being reactive, and being a provider. Because those are just extremely abused. It's like any guy that buys a girl a drink, oh, he's a provider. Any guy that takes her off dinner, he's a provider, right? Any guy that defends himself in an argument is being reactive. The guys are taught to like lay down, take a beating, and say, hey, thanks, man. Like, you see the guys in the forums that follow RSD. Oh, thank you. Thanks, man. Like, And I'm like, you're a fucking like, blah, blah, blah. And they're like, thank you so much, man. I appreciate it. You know, it's like it's like if you were to punch a guy in the face, and he's like, "Hey, man, like punch this side now." Yeah, you know, let me bring up how uh, you and I came to like ninety eight percent of the same concepts without actually checking with each other. I mean, there's some things that we did bounce off each other, but a lot of concepts were just we just realized. Yeah, every time every time me and Alex like touch base, there's like a lot of the same shit that we're doing independently, which is what happened to, happened to me with Frederick Nietzsche and philosophy. I, I went through this like whole philosophical journey where I was like iteratively like refining ideas and i would i would like find out about a particular important topic like free will or souls or um the existence of god or something like this a, a basis for ethics or purpose and i would like write a whole uh very solid argument set of arguments uh, on my position and i would circulate it to all my smartest friends and professors with the sole hope that they would find problems with it so that i can make it stronger and that's what i do in the game as well like i want people to be able to poke holes in anything i'm doing and show me ways to improve it. That's how we get better. It's not, oh, this is my system. Nobody nobody touch it. I, I welcome that, as you should, to make it better. And after I went through all that process and I had like a rock solid set of beliefs, I discovered Nietzsche. And he lined up with like everything. And it, like across the board. And it, and it was to me, that was like, even though there are a lot of minority positions, uh, to me, that was like independent confirmation. And it's the same in, when, when me and Alex arrive at a bunch of these same things through our own processes. It's like, yeah, the, and, and we know why that stuff works because we had to go through this whole fucking path to get there. Well, but it's like the, you're pursuing the truth is what you're doing and you're doing it, you know, honestly. And that's that's basically the opposite of what our enemies are doing. These frauds are just making a bullshit to sell, 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 sell. When we ride on our enemies. <laughs> um, let's take a look at this uh, super chat. Thanks for his, uh, the gang channel. Who are the Manosphere scams and why? How to know? So we can get a little more specific. Maybe we got your whole roast here. Like who's the, yeah, who, who aren't who aren't the manosphere scams? That's a that's a more easy answer. I would say yeah. modern life date modern life dating is the biggest culprit in my opinion, or one of the biggest. Easily, yeah, totally. Yeah, I a have video. a hundred slide presentation coming in the next part. He has a video two. where he says he's by far the best dating coach ever, and no one comes close. Wow, it's the most ridiculous video ever. Someone said, "Oh, you he was said driving a time. cab." He was driving a cab a year and a half ago and teaching English, and he almost got arrested for an Airbnb scam. Yeah, and he and there's like what's the pedophilia stuff? I think Anthony Johnson can talk to that. Yeah, we did a whole roast on that called the Mano Purge Chapter One. You guys can check that out. It's like two hours long on our channel. And I talked with the guy who's been kind of tracking MLD and going through his Instagram and stuff. They're doing a good job. They call MLD a suspected pedo, and I understand why, and they're they're kind of accurate. But I think it's more accurate to call him a child stalker. Uh, that's really <laughs> what he does. And I actually found a video finally because I was worried these photos from his Instagram that could be fake, like someone could Photoshop it. So I was like, these look real, but I don't actually know. But then there's a video I found where MLD goes on video, pulls these pictures up and addresses them because the MGTOW guys were going at him. And he owns up to it. He's like, oh, that was not a Disney World. It was over here. So he actually confirms on video, and we'll go into this maybe at some point, that these pictures are his and they're of little children in public. This fucking- Why? You know, what was his reason for having those? 
I don't there's know. No, there's no real really explanation. Good. The video is mad creepy. Like he, when he gets called down, he's like, "No, nah, dude, yeah. I, it was a Disney World. There's children everywhere. It was that yeah, kind of vibe." Like, exactly. You know. It's insane. Like, there's what? no reason to take pictures of other people's children in public. It's sick. It's twisted. We, there's it's a picture sick. of uh, Derek Moneyberg with Brandon Carter at Disney World. Yeah. <laughs> I could pull some of these up right now. Let me actually hang on. I think I have some of these still in here. Give me a second. <laughs> uh was it so funny it, nope, like, like we all got into this to like nope. like make nope. you know make game very very strong and now this we're talking one. about fucking this scam one. dating coaches yeah <laughs> well this so this is what he does these are real so i actually verified now that these are real he's addressed some of these this is him taking pictures of little children this is another one from his these are not all disney world this is like all around these are him taking pictures of little kids man what these are not his children he doesn't know these people he just fucking goes around taking pictures of kids and then he says that they're like adorable and shit. It's like, bro, those aren't your kids. You don't know those kids. You don't know the parents. Like, this is not okay. You can get fucking, you can get knocked out for this or fucking killed. Like, imagine walking around New York doing that or, you know, some American city. Like, hey, I'm going to take pictures of your kids that you know. What, what's scary is it goes so deep. Like, I didn't even know who this guy was. And then guys are, me are messaging me. Hey, I, I got his pandemic pickup and it looks identical to your Corona pickup. And then I'm like looking yeah. through my emails and I see he purchased it with modernlifedating at gmail.com. And he's talking about novel concept that it, concepts that I innovated that have never been discussed. Right. And then when I call him out, he's like, Oh, the product sucked. And, and I, and he refunded it. Right. But he stole all the shit. And then you like go down the rabbit hole and it's like, he's taking pictures of kids. He's copying yeah. even dead guys products. He's literally like, like player Supreme, here's body language mastery. He's going to a dead guy's content and repackaging it and profiting off of it. So right? these yeah. guys he's just, are he's just getting out logins to my product. He's not even bothering to put his own name on it. He's just getting wow. real lazy. Yeah, I think some of these guys, so we're talking about MLD here, but really it was kind of like, I think a couple tiers of frauds. And then outside the, the hierarchy, you have the internet marketers who are like mega scammers because they have a lot of money invested in it, right? They're dropping hundred thousand dollars a month, 200 grand a month in ads. They have oh. the big get kicked off ad here, servers. And here's something, here's ads. something we can show everyone. Um, do, you, do you know the, uh, here, we'll keep talking. I'm going to, I'm going to pull it up and link you. Okay. There's the Pandora's box. It's a team of super affiliate internet marketers. Yep. That that literally just engineered it to to like rip off as many people as possible. It has no bearing with real dating advice whatsoever. Yep. But they mass they push they pushed uh, mass paid advertising, and um and they they basically it's like their sales letter is very clever. It just says like Amazon, Google, and Facebook got together in in a classified setting and decoded dating, <laughs> and now it's been like unclassified, and I you can have access because uh, that's here. what Facebook does because they really care about guys getting laid. <laughs> this is it right here. Yeah, it's uh, I know some of these guys from back in the day, like, you know, I don't know, maybe Vin DiCarlo and some of these guys run it. They they just go down this rabbit hole of trying to make money off people and they just sell their souls and they end up going bankrupt and do a lot of drugs and shit. They're just fucking they're just massive mega scammers. And go to go to click syndicate dot com. Click syndicate. I'll pull it yeah, dot, dot com. So like this, this is basically like. It shows the whole fucking marketing backbone. This is one of the, most guys in the community don't know about Pandora's box, but it's like one of the most popular dating products that they just like hit men across the globe in a, on a mass scale. So scroll, scroll down to their products. Now look at this. It's just, it's a super affiliate network. Now there's this whole team of marketers. Keep going down a little bit more. Look at, wait, we go up a little bit. Actually, there's Pandora's box. Just go up a little bit uh, right here, up a little bit more. Um, like the stats, look at that. Yeah. Thousand affiliates all pushing this shit. Thirty million in payouts for affiliates. Now go down a little bit. There's there's Pandora's box in the middle. Yep. If you go down, yep. yeah, right there. So click that. What the fuck is prolozyme? Is it a dick pill or something? It's shit? fake. It's fake <laughs> testosterone products. Yeah. So look at this. Uh, I don't know if you can make that bigger or not. Yep. Oh, uh, zoom in or something. Uh, this is a this is a, this is just a full BS dating product that they're pushing. They're that... pushing through a massive affiliate network. Okay. Yep. How to pick and up that, hot that... girls. So let's let's pause about let's talk about this though because a lot of guys don't understand this. I do, and you know Alex I think does too. But these guys get together like this fucking mafia cabal of like sucking each other's dicks, and then they promote this crap, and they all know it's garbage. They know it's garbage 100. percent They don't know they don't think it's garbage. They know it's garbage. It's produced like you said by like you know Indians in India or something. They don't know anything. Yep, they like content fucking, farm. Yeah, but the purchase decision is made before anyone even sees inside. So all they need to do is sell them on the emotional high, yep. and the and solving the pain points and, and empty promises. Yeah, it's fucking right. John, didn't you say you met the uh, the owner of uh, Pandora's Box or one of those systems? And you turned Tal Tal Badass. Yeah, it yeah. was at a conference in San Diego, and he took and he was drunk, and it, and he's since emailed me personally and was, and was like incessantly asking me to take take down where I reference this. Um, but he says, "Oh yeah, the, the product's full bullshit. It's it's Tal Badass. It was um, 
it was being run on ClickBank and it was beating like all the other scam niches. It was beating like skin, diet, muscle, like all the classic like scam products, even make money online. It, it was dominating. I know from an inside source, they're making over 50K a day on it for a long time. Wow. And who wrote the, who wrote the sales letter? John Benson, the famous copywriter, John Benson. Mm -hmm. And um, he ended up like making that program called the Accelerator, where he like burned his own VSL formula. But this was before he burned his formula. And this, you know, like I, I feel like it touched like they're they're pumping so much paid traffic through there. I feel like it touched like most men in developed countries yeah. had seen this. And then when they fatigue a particular presentation, they just come come in with a new angle. Like Pandora's box, they just started marketing to older dudes because they had more money, and they started their whole sales pitch is around. Here's how an old dude can get a young hot chick. It's just one little trick, right? And and you see, and these guys get hit with this shit, and it sells in the dream, and then they they get into it, and then uh, what what is it? What is it called? Uh, the dating syndicate, yeah, um, production syndicate. All have it's a whole network of scam products, and what they all do is they they cross when they, they all have their own email list. They all cross promote each other's fake products, yep. and they fucking and I don't even I haven't even gotten into this fucking rabbit hole on my channel yet, and they fucking. Um, What's the other thing they do? They um, inside the portal, inside the content portal, it's just littered with upsells for yep. for their own stuff. You you can unlock this part of the bullshit content. You can unlock this course from this other bullshit person. And what they're doing is is just keeping everyone on this fucking hamster wheel, and nobody's getting better. Yep. But everyone's being sold like more and more and more bullshit. They're just getting it's just a rip off train. Yeah, it's an upsell, you know, insanity. You know, ten upsells in a row, and it's all bullshit at every step and every stage. It's yeah, you should you should need ten products to get good at a particular area. Another big one is uh, endless options. I did a video on this on my channel. A former uh, simple pickup guy. Yeah, yeah. I, I went through uh, I went through some of his uh, content. Like I w actually evaluated his bio, so I made like logical point why it sucks and like it's so dog shit. He said he says he spent four hundred thousand on testing this bio. This bio fucking sucks. Like the bio I have, I had five years ago when I started Tinder was a lot better than his. Yeah. Let's, we got about uh, 250 guys on on the stream. This is good. Yeah, um, let's, let's get into something you actually just put out, John. I want to get into the uh, this one here. Let me pull it up. Ryan so you just Rolo. put this one out. Yeah, Ryan and Rolo. So Ryan's busted wife. And actually, I'm surprised. He didn't, this is a good picture of how she's just basically fat and kind of like very average. Like, I'd give her a, like a friendly five, like a fat five. I'll uh, give her a four. But four there's this one too. I mean, look at this. Yeah, I, you didn't use this one. This is, a, this is a really rough one in my opinion. Look at that. Look at that neck, bro. It's like a turkey neck going on here, like a shoulder. I feel like you get, you know, those turkey legs you get like at Disney World, like them big turkey legs. I feel like that's her arm, like the arm. You can just kind of see that going on. All there. right. So, so to me, this, this, this like devalues, like just any, either one of these pictures devalues anything this guy could ever tell me. Like, like, yes, we can attack why all their technical points are wrong too. Yes, we can attack why they're promoting scammers. But when this is like the fucking facts here, where well, there's no coming back from that. It, yeah. To me, and I've had reporter, I've had like feminist reporters contact me. Do you regret calling this other coach's girl for? I'm like, no, I don't actually, because that's uh, a disgrace to call himself an expert and to get someone that's below average objectively. Look, that's not misogynistic. We can all universally agree that through our attraction circuitry, yeah. that girl is objectively below average on a, yeah. on a 10 point scale. And I, and I tell her that straight up. Um, so to me, it's literally the equivalent of a homeless guy with, a, with an empty bank account saying here i'm going to make a whole channel on how to make money and i'm going to give you tons of advice on how to make money and i'm going to put out programs how to make money but by the way i don't have any money yeah. you know and that's what every one of these guys is doing and then w what a surprise is that their content fucking sucks if their content worked they, they'd be using it themselves <laughs> right yeah it's a big scam and it, it's disturbing man these guys like why ryan's actually married to that woman in canada yeah now, some of that some of that's his common law you know out of necessity but he still Same knew shit. about it. Had a, why did he marry her? They don't have any kids. As far as I know, they have no intention to have kids. I've talked to him about that personally, one on one. So what the fuck is the point of marrying her? Why? Number one, why is he with her? I mean, that's it's a, that's what you're addressing here. What is, what is the story there? I don't know. What, what he he once said on the Redman Group. I'm pretty sure he announced this publicly on this show a long time ago when he was on it. That uh, he he was he met her at a party and she was like a cokehead, like some <laughs> party girl. Like, so, and, but she's oh, fat gets, too. It gets, even, it gets even better. <laughs> I haven't verified this, but I think there's an old episode of Red Man Group where he says this out loud. And, you know, it's like, all right, well, you married. So you're now you're married to this woman. She's kind of fat. She's constantly dying her hair. She's not that great looking. She's average at best, middle of the road. And you're married to her and you have no kids. Like, what is there's like multiple layers of dumb fuckery that have occurred here. When I saw your lines off the bathroom, I knew she was the one for me. 
Yeah, and then he's like, gonna go around and, and then he's gonna go around and give everyone advice, right? And, and what, I don't know much it's about worse this guy, that. but hang on, it's worse because he isn't just giving advice. Anybody could give advice, right? He claims he's basically a red pill alpha male. He's supposed to give you the red pill, and you're not supposed to be a beta. You're supposed to be an alpha male. So this dude, uh, this fucking dude right here, is a red pill alpha male married to at best a five, at best, who's fat. I mean, God bless her. Hope she loses weight and stuff when it gets healthy, but she ain't nothing to brag about at all. And this is supposed to be the basis and part of him. You pull this up again. And keep, keep in mind, here's another very, very, very key thing. <laughs> I was so angry during this video. <laughs> keep in mind, when you look at these pictures, this – wait, go back to the go back to the one with Donovan and the other one where, where it's got them both on the screen. Yep. Um, this not only is like just a sampling of what they got, this is like the ultimate finish line. The best. The best so they what, could what, do. So what happened before this is my exactly. question. Exactly. 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 There wasn't, there, wasn't like a, there wasn't a string of stunners, and then they're like, "All right, I'm checking out of the game." Dude, this is their climb at Mount Olympus, and this is what they got on the right. This is a woman who's almost 45 years old. She's like an old lady. She's gonna go through menopause like any day, and that's supposed to be a nine or better, a perfect ten maybe. This is what he claims. I showed this obviously last week on that you know the, the documentary, but yeah, it's it's disturbing. Yeah, man. I wouldn't bang. I wouldn't bang either one of these girls. Like even if I was paid, most likely. Like yeah. it, it's it's like that would be like re re revolting or repulsive. I don't blame you. That's it's yeah, gross. Not, yeah. even, not even close. Not even if I was drunk, dude. Your your yeah. lizard brain would kill you for getting near that shit. Yeah, it's gross. So what are they? So what are they doing? Like what? I mean, we can we can keep berating these guys. It's it's very obvious. But but why, why do they think? That's why I got so fired up on the last one. Is they're like they're like uh, oh it's so easy to make this videos. Real content is hard. Yeah, I've got almost five hundred videos and I give away way too much. I've had lots of guys get very good just for my free content. Yeah. And they're not putting out anything even remotely close to the value of that content. They haven't accomplished anything yeah. remotely close to what I have in the game. And they're going to just sit around like, oh, they like do these like very regular podcasts where they're just going to like run their mouth on baseless stuff. And, and they're just like recirculating like baseless arguments. Oh, what did Rich call him? A fat can of smashed assholes. Ha <laughs> ha. And rolls like, yeah. Like, or they go the they go deeper sometimes. Like Donovan, the Donna, the Sharp Mama, he goes on Reddit and stuff, I think, like the Red Pill subreddit. He's just going into the sidebar of old information from guys who are long gone in the manosphere. He basically recycles that. It's like they find this old information, they recycle it, almost like an old book. They kind of shine it up and then yeah. repackage it into a product. Like they yeah. steal products in different ways. They're not all they steal, like MLD you're saying is stealing from you guys. I don't I don't doubt you, I don't blame you. It's exactly what he's doing. But another Donovan's not doing that. He's I don't think he's stealing products directly. He's stealing it from like Reddit and stuff. That yeah. most guys on YouTube are gonna have no clue about. They're not on the Red Pill subreddit. Speaking They're 19 years old, you know. Speaking of Reddit, let me clear the air on something because I didn't even know this was going on. Someone emailed me. I remember I told I mentioned the beginning of this this uh, this in this uh, what do we call this podcast? Yeah, it's a podcast. Yeah. <laughs> like in the beginning of this discussion here, I mentioned how Coffeezilla called me up and was like, I received all these screenshots, all this stuff, and I like disproved it in like 20 ways. It was all full fabrication, which means someone's like trying to bury me. He's like, Who do you think it could be? I'm like, oh, let's see. I've been I've been going hard like at the fucking throats of like a lot of people. That a lot of these guys are, are rich and powerful too from this scandal. <laughs> but, but what I want to address is now someone's like on a on a campaign to to like uh, ruin my name on Reddit. Someone said there's like 30 Reddit threads about how I'm a rapist. And first of Whoa. all, this, this can be objectively disproven. There, I've never been accused or charged with rape ever. Okay, I've only been arrested one time in my life. That was in 2013. Everything points to a setup, and it, and it was over a kidnapping, alleged charge, okay, or, or the, a real charge actually, alleged kidnapping, that where I just went to a car and made out with a girl in Vegas. Who all this stuff was linked to Derek Moneyberg. And I'm not going to get into all the stuff I know about it, um, but that that never went to trial, and there was no conviction on that charge, and there there was no sex in that case. So all this stuff about how I'm a rapist, there's it's never even been an accusation, and it's definitely never been a charge. Okay, they're like, smearing you, they're slandering you. You can look that up, and and there's like 30 posts about it. So I've got all these guys emailing me, hey, what's all this stuff about how you raped a girl? Right, never happened. Yeah. And you can look that you can look up like with my real name. You can look up, and and there's no record of that because it's never happened. It's but, character assassination. They're trying to honestly, the Reddit picture. community though is the worst of the worst. I was banned from Reddit seduction. They basically uh, banned me for no reason. I was actively contributing. I was getting posts that had 300, 400 upvotes, which was way more than anyone was getting. Contributing a lot of value. Had a lot of guys DMing me, and then they just banned me. And I PM the mods, and they were like, "Yeah, you know, some of the guys don't like some of the content you've been saying." I was like, "What specifically?" They couldn't name anything. Yep. Yeah, you said our seduction too. Yeah, that's different than the red pill. 
They're both uh, similar size, though, about 300,000 guys in it. The Red Pill yeah. community, I get downloaded to oblivion every time I say something. They call me a simp every time. Wow. Yeah, I'm a simp for counting lays. Uh, do the logic on that. Do the, do the math on that. Yep. Oh, yeah, you've been with almost 1,400 chicks, but you're a simp. And the guys right. like, that. for putting in some effort to get laid. The if the guy guys are like, you hop on your dick automatically, then you're a simp because you put in work. Well, let's let's call it out though. The guys calling you a simp have banged like three or four women in their life. Exactly, or less. Yeah. Like it, they're just totally. They have zero skill, zero ability to call you that, and they're hiding behind. You know, you're in real life. You have, you have your face, identity here, and stuff. They're just fucking yeah. losers behind a keyboard. Yeah. It's it's systemic to the manosphere. I think there's the demographics of it, and there's not too much you can do about that except be patient over time and keep moving the manosphere in the right direction. But the frauds are what has to go. That I think is the real the core issue in the manosphere. It's been going on for like at least 15, 20 years. Mm -hmm. These frauds that are, they keep growing and growing and growing. And since you have so much beta, you have so many beta males that don't understand women. They don't understand life. They don't understand a lot of anything. They just are, they're in pain. They want to get better. And then these frauds fucking prey on them like vultures. Oh, I froze. What the fuck's going on there? Hang on a sec. We're retarded. I'm going to fix my video, uh, but I can still hear you guys. We second. lost President Johnson. I think another problem is a lot of the frauds, they all, uh, they all market together. So they're all working together. They go on each other's podcasts. So they're not like us isolated. Yep. Yeah, and it's all fake endorsements and stuff too. I mean, there's some, I'm gonna eventually do a video, probably going through some of those. But you can see the bullshit. Like, it's a fact that they don't—they don't even know each other, and they're like, "Yeah, you were a—you were a killer, bro. You were a slayer back in Vegas or whatever." And right. It's like, motherfucker, you didn't even know this guy when he's in Vegas ten years ago. You're just like, you believe whatever you're told to sell the fucking product and sell the affiliate, get the affiliate commission. It's a fucking scam. The other issue I've talked about is a lot of the guys who I think are scammers, they're not, uh, they're afraid to go on other people's channels who are like, who think differently than them. They're afraid to get yep. into debate because I'm willing to have pretty much anyone on my channel, regardless of how they feel, uh, as long as I feel like it could be an interesting content. But they won't, yep. they won't come on. I had Richard Cooper. He's told me he wants to come on. He's excited. And then he just bounced. He just goes. Oh. Oh, Recently? Yeah. Uh, this was like two months ago. Uh, yeah, Cooper's a loser. He's uh, he's not a well he's definitely a, like a just a piece of shit to be honest slime ball, but he's not as bad as the guys like the the fraud father and Donovan Chart or the Chart Mala and MLD they're like mega retarded. Cooper's up there, but he's not top three. He's maybe top ten or something like that. And I don't think he's like he wants to like overcharge guys, hypercharge them. He charges two thousand dollars an hour, for example, for phone coaching, yeah, which is sustain which is way higher even than a high end attorney, than a high end plastic surgeon maybe like. The amount of money he's charging for basically dating coaching, and I've seen him do this in Mount House, like 10 feet from where I'm sitting right now. He's like, he reads shit out of Rolo's book to these guys, The Iron Rules of Tomasi, and he charges them $2,000 an hour for it. Rolo's in on the scam because he gets book promotion from Cooper's channel. It's a big circle jerk, and it's very like, at least with Cooper, it's like low key. A lot of guys don't understand it, except with things that are more obvious and overt, like the charging for the phone coaching and shit. And the other, all the other crap that he has, yeah. But he sucks in real life with women. I've seen him. I have some some even some pictures that can probably prove that if I ever decide to release them. We'll see. I don't know about the legality of that. Some kind of uh, tepid about that. But yeah, he's, he's a loser with women. I've seen him in real life in Orlando, and it's bad. Just add one quick story. Not to wrap up on this, but to add one quick story about MLD. Uh, yeah. I was really trying hard to get this guy to come on my channel and explain it, but he doesn't want to. But anyway, so it was one. It's one of my mastermind members. He used to be with MLD. And basically what happened is MLD just abused him for like a year. He was telling him he's a loser. He's like, he's a failure. And this guy was like already in like kind of fucked up mental state. So it just caused him to go down the path. And basically this guy was on a crazy amount of anti-anxiety meds. So MLD told him to just quit those cold turkey. Like he's not a doctor. You can't give that advice. It's also horrible advice because anyone who knows anything about anti-anxiety meds knows you can't quit those cold turkey. You have to taper off. And like if he had done that, he probably would have died. Yeah. You can't just quit massive amounts of product and cold turkey, but that's By the way, fun. guys, I want, to, I want to take a quick commercial break. I want to show off the uh, new shirt we got going. We got the uh, Donna Dusa special edition shirt, limited edition. Available can, you blow, our... can you blow up that image? Because I, I got my yeah. face hiding in the corner. I showed my assistant, and, he's, and he didn't see my face at first. I had to blow it up. You guys see it now? The better? Yeah. You're there. It's a nice T-shirt, high quality, men's staple tee, $21 plus shipping. Mm -hmm. And it ships, I think, out the United States and Europe. Uh, Anthony, uh, John Anthony, if you need one, I'll ship. They got we got tank tops too for you, man. Special. Yeah, dude. Here. Yeah, yeah. That's my. Go, I don't. Man. I don't dress up for my cast, according to to Ryan Stone. Yep. Yeah, I like wearing tank tops. It's it's like it doesn't get cold here, so. Yeah. A link in the description if you guys want to buy it and support the show. Uh, destroy all the frauds. Get your T-shirt. Put in the uh, the real the world work. Dude, the world I'll wear I'll wear this on my YouTube videos. Yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna wear it eventually too. I got a couple coming to my house right now, so. <laughs> yeah. 
Let's talk some more about specifics though. We've been going through this. Uh, I want to get to more specific frauds if I can get your uh, back to where's the, the uh, I'm trying to get back to your playlist right now. Yeah. So what I are your put, thoughts I didn't on put the Ryan one on the on the playlist yet? The Ryan and Rolo one. Okay. And uh, maybe I'll go to your channel as well, uh, Alex. You you have a probably not a playlist, but you have some roast too. No, I only had one roast. It was uh, endless options because I felt that one was ridiculous. I've been trying even... to I've been trying to bring him to the dark side. He's more <laughs> uh, PC than me. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, I get it. I mean, you get bitched out for making this stuff, but the reality is, like, ninety nine percent of your content is probably positive. Same thing on my channel. Ninety nine point nine percent of the content is just positive educational content. You know, it might be a criticizing feminism or helping men learn something, but basically, it's just positive. But you do one fucking thing to call it a fraud, and people lose their shit. Because it means, I think it means that it shows them that they're vulnerable. They don't want to, it's, you know, it's a hard, it's a harsh truth. They don't want to believe that they were manipulated. But that's the reality. Cognitive, gonna, cognitive distance. That. Cognitive, that's what you're asking for what psychological principle. When yeah. someone has devoted time, effort, and in some cases money to this guru that you, you like light up and, and totally destroy, um, they feel, they feel really bad and they need to justify in their mind. They don't want to think, oh, I was just duped. So they want to, they either want to like look to how can they discredit the one that's killing their idol? Or how can they rationalize that? Okay, it's okay. He's with a two. Uh, she probably has a perfect ten personality, maybe even the best personality in the world, because that would make sense then, and it would keep their hero really cool. And then at the same time, they're also like, "Yeah, hot girls aren't worth the time, anyways." They have to like, they have to like twist all the real truths to like fit the story. And then you're like, "Here's more proof. Here's more proof." And eventually, it like tips. I, th I think they can't cling to it anymore, or they just yeah. start to hate me because I'm the one that's like making those uncomfortable feelings inside of them. They so hate like, you for oh. telling them the truth is the bottom line. Yeah. So, like, oh, he's just crazy. He's just a psycho. He's a sociopath. Yep. And, then, and then they can, like, cling to the to the hero some more. And they go back to that guy's channel and just, you know, try to forget about it. Yep. We got some super chats I missed, by the way. I want to get into them briefly. Thanks for the super chats, guys. I appreciate it. You guys are the Avengers of the Manosphere. ADJ, Donovan reacted to your roast on Fresh and Fit. Please make a response. Yeah, I, I saw it on the Black Belt Truth channel. It's pretty brutal. It's extremely oh, I got to see that. Yeah, it's bad. It's what did bad. he? What did he say? Can you can you summarize? Uh, I can pull it up actually in a second. It's short. It's like ten seconds. He, uh, we'll get into it. I'll show it. I think I can pull up the audio too. I'll play it. And maybe the thing I'll is, do there's, it no longer. Defense. there's no defense when you show the picture. Like with anything he said, there's no defense. He's claiming Photoshop. Like he, I showed like 150 fucking like, texts or something screenshots. Right? <laughs> He's claiming Photoshop. Like I would. Sp do you know? Are you fucking kidding me? Dude, that that video took effort. All right. I'm, let's I'm not even get into that. It took real effort to do the research. I didn't even know about his wife's age until like fucking maybe two weeks ago doing the research on this shit. I'm like, holy fuck. Like that even, I knew a lot of shit about him and then I'm doing more and I'm like, oh my God, this is fucked. This is mega fucked. So we'll show that his response in a minute. I think I can pull it up with audio. It's a short clip. Uh, but then we got this one too. Sam Kilburn, thanks for $10. John Anthony, you have lived in many countries. Does the game differ from the United States to Brazil to Europe? Is one country easier to cold approach than in the other? Well, one of the, one of the biggest differences is that there's a lot less fat people. But the real stat is that 80% of people in the U.S., men and women, are overweight. So when in a place 80, like Poland, 80%? Yeah, four and five. Holy shit. Jesus. And, and I don't know. That's that's overweight, not not yeah. necessarily obese. I think like obese, it's like 30 or something like that. But, but overweight, yeah. right? So but when you when I was like in Poland and Ukraine, um, I could go literally weeks or sometimes even like a month or two without seeing one person overweight. It was like yep. seeing someone in a wheelchair. So when that happens, the whole bell curve shifts. Because when you're on Tinder, it's not like cannon fodder, cannon fodder, cannon fodder, cannon fodder. Okay, this one's, you know. Instead, it's, okay, these girls are all in shape. Which face do I like? Or, you know, which other, which breast size or, or ass size? But um, <laughs> at least at first, right? So you determine their internals when you hang out. But also the internals in Eastern Europe and South America, and Alex can attest to this too, um, are far better. I have a video called Eastern versus Western Women that I can I can link in the in the thing. Where basically I feel like on on average I found they are more elegant, more feminine, more respectful. Yep. They play less games. They flake less. Um, they're just cooler chicks, and you can like walk up to nines, and they're very receptive yep. in a lot of these places. Whereas in the states, good luck. It's a, and most of my ladies are from the states. For the record, people, a lot of people think like I just went and hit easy mode countries. I don't think I was in any easy mode country. Like I never did like a Thailand or an Indonesia. I purposely avoided those places. So people couldn't say that I padded my lay count with the easy mode places. Um, some people try to say my whole lay count was in Colombia. I did like a three week trip to Medellin and I did a two week trip to Bogota with Alex actually. And we were there together. You got held, you got held at knife point, right? <laughs> Jesus. Good times. You had, you had some damage happen to your Airbnb. 
Oh yeah, the girl shit all over my apartment after yeah, I after I left for a flight. Like, so we got another we're gonna super chat here. I'm gonna read this one out. Dylan Sanders, thanks for the 4.99. Remember the first PY community? What happened? Did Anthony think Brad Pease and AFC Adam were legit? Yeah, Panduros was Vin DiCarlo, complete scam. Yeah, it's complicated. I mean, uh, I'm not going to talk too much trash about. I don't even know some of these guys too much. I met Brad P once back in like 2006. Yeah, 2006. Well, do you know anything about David D'Angelo? David D'Angelo is the internet marketer Evan Peg. Yeah, yeah, of course. He created a multi-million yeah. dollar uh, empire, and I actually met him in person like three years ago at a conference. Okay. And he's a little dweeb. He's like a little tiny, like you know, just kind of like nervous guy. Yep. He married some like love coach. They, they they go to Burning Man and like I think take fucking hard I've, drugs together. I've seen. And, yeah. it, and it, you know, he was he was no lady killer, but he but he monetizes the space. And I, I, you know, his advice wasn't all bad. He's one of those people that was like straddling a little bit and like trying to give I think some good advice here and there. But it, it, by no means was he like a master at the game. Yeah. It, the, the the problem is is like biologically we all have this need. Like I, I heard there's a student review on my uh, that I put up on my channel recently, and the guy was like, "Everything we're doing in life is to get chicks. Like we're we're trying to make more money and get better shape and all this stuff to get chicks, and you and so that creates a big need to master this problem, but it also creates a big opportunity for people to come in and make money, just yeah. promising to the world and delivering nothing. And then and then since most people don't take action on content anyways, what is it like? Ninety percent of people don't even go through a product when they when they purchase it. Yep. Then they can just say, "Oh, it's because I didn't. I just I was just lazy," or "Oh, it just it probably works for everyone else, but not for me because there's fake reviews." Well, all this stuff. What do you think about this? Because you know the manosphere is not only community; it's an industry. You have the pickup industry selling dating products. You have other industry, you know, communities and stuff. So it's a community and an industry. But I'm also thinking about other industries. There's frauds everywhere, right? Self improvement in general. You've been talking about Napoleon Hill and these things. Obviously, in the fitness industry, especially on YouTube, there's a lot of frauds and scammers. Six pack shortcuts was, in, in my opinion, a notorious example. Basically, yeah, that was those the big marketers too. Yeah, that was that was the Pandora's box for fitness, right? Mm -hmm. But I think that the each industry will number one always have frauds and scammers in it. You can't get rid of it. You can't get rid of violent crime. You can't get rid of poverty. You can't get rid of homelessness. Even in the best case scenario in a country, you always have a little bit of this stuff, right? No matter what you do. So I think you always have frauds and scammers. The issue is that. And say the fitness industry, I think you have a lot. Self improvement, you have a lot. I think in the manosphere, you probably have the most. It's probably the worst of all. Maybe that's a bias I have from being in it for so long, but it's really bad. I think, I think I've heard I've heard in other niches, it's 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 most people as well. I think it's in most. Niches, the fitness yeah. is really bad. Most most of the guys in the fitness community, they're on uh, they're on gear, but they're pretending like they're not. Yeah. So TRT, HGH, Deca, yep. and they're yep. saying they're natty. I do want to answer this though. This guy asked me about you know the speakers and stuff. Uh, Brad P was never a speaker, although Brad P was the first guy I ever invited to be a speaker at 21. That was in I, met, I invited him in August of 2006 and Fort Lauderdale. He had like a speaking thing he did down there, but I saw only met him once. That was just a thing. He never spoke. Sin from Love Systems or Mystery Method did speak once in 2008. AFC Adams also spoke a couple times. A couple times with 21 convention. Honestly, it's I don't uh, find a speaker and do like deep research. I don't. I look at what they have online. You know, I try to make do a basic research on them. Like, is this guy a fraud or a scammer? And it's not always obvious, right? From distance, you have to like know. So when you get close to somebody, you can learn, right? I was able to do this on Donovan, that that huge documentary roast, because I've known him for all these years, and he sent me all this fucking shit. He basically strung himself up. He put himself in a super bad position, and then attacked me like a fucking crazy guy. And what happened? You got his your whole fucking life just got destroyed. Is what happened. But the twenty one convention is more like a TED Talks for men. And I'm pretty savage with it, but I'm not perfect. I can't I can't do this deep. I'm not doing like FBI background checks on every fucking speaker. This is ridiculous, right? I put them up on a stage and I try to let the audience and the manosphere decide based on the speeches, right? Maybe maybe later he gets exposed by you or someone else, maybe by me if there's a huge problem. That's rare, but that happens with Rolo, obviously the yeah. father, and now the Don, the sharp mama. That's really unusual though, right? I don't usually do that, but in severe cases and extreme cases, I'll do that because it needs to be done. And you know, I went through that in the video. But guys like you, I'm glad you guys. I'm glad you have the balls to go after these guys, including when you have pushback from the beta male police and shit. But anyway, the 21 convention, like I have my background here, it's an open platform, right? And unless and until there's an obvious problem or something I can deal with, I just try to leave it as an open platform. I'm gonna put this dude on a stage and put a camera in front of his face, and hopefully through that, you know, like the, what the Indians used to say, like, you know, the picture is the window to the soul, the video is the window to the soul. I mean, especially when you get someone up in public, like a public speaking stage, right? You got 100, 200 guys there. That's There's like pressure from that, social pressure. You got lights, you're hot, you're sweating. There's audio, there's shit going on. There's video cameras everywhere. That to me should eventually reveal somebody. Like I think, you know, in the end of the day, all the stuff with Rolo, you should be able to look at him on a stage and determine this guy's kind of a dork. 
He does not have good, good body language. He does not stand strong. He's not a confident adult man. He's just like wispy, whizzly weirdo with like a, like a failed guitarist, like you're saying. And I think actually him speaking and putting himself out there on podcasts and on, especially on stages, it Evidence demonstrates against. that. Yep. Yeah, it's de it's so it demonstrates it. So anyway, I'm not perfect, man. I do my best. And uh, if there's a big what, problem, what's that, I take care of it. Uh, term like suspension of disbelief. Like, like when I actually bought into the Kool Aid, because, because when, like, when Tyler, RSC Tyler, was making all these claims, you just assume they're true. Like in the very beginning, I was, I was like, wow, this guy's like a rock star. Like this guy's like so amazing. I hope I can get to his level one day. And I signed up for a program with them. Yeah. And I was at 103 late count, and it, it shattered my whole world at that time. Watching him get relentlessly destroyed. I actually spent a bunch of the the program, even though I, I pulled multiple times in the program. I spent a bunch of the program uh, following him around. <clears throat> watching these terrible reactions and i would go up to the girls after me like hey that, that, like that's my buddy what do you what do you think about that guy weird creepy awkward gay cringe like oh <laughs> like ugh, ugh, <laughs> ugly. like countless reports of that and then i caught him in a bunch of lies like he would go home alone and then the next day yeah. he's telling a fully fabricated story about pulling mm -hmm. a stunner or, well, or what, what chick is ever going to be like look at picture of Todd, like you know i really want to fuck this guy I made a video where I showed like a girl in Portugal. I'm like, it, it was not pre-scripted or anything. I'd never shown it, her him before. And we were out like on a date. And I was like, hey, and we did like a, a thing with to the camera. I'm like, look at this guy. And she's like, oh, and she like watched a little bit of the video. She's like, it looks like he's trying really hard. It looks like he's faking. And women pick up on this stuff very quickly. They have like advanced, uh, you know, social circuitry based on how their brains are wired. Ten times more white matter. And um and, and people are like, oh, you're so beta trying to have like women comment about it's very relevant. This is everyone's hero. This is everyone. This is like it's like getting rid of Santa Claus. Yep. Like you all these children growing up with Santa Claus, and then you're like, there's no Santa Claus. Well, there's no fucking manslayer known as or what yep. woman slayer. I tweeted that <laughs> the other night, actually. I killed I killed Santa Claus for a lot of guys. I mean, there's thousands of comments under that that Donovan documentary, The Truth About Him. It's brutal. I mean, these guys woke I actually red pilled a lot of these guys, and it was hard. I had to go with Rolo. It was effective, but not super effective. But Donovan, that was brutal. I mean, this guy, these comments on that are, are savage. And it's guys who used to like him. Their eyes were fucking opened up. They were enlightened, they said. And, they were, and now they're angry. And they should be angry. They got defrauded and scammed. But it took a huge amount of effort to do that at a high level like that, uh, which is good. I think there's a, there's a range of exposure we need to do on these guys. These hit videos you're doing, you know, 10, 20 minutes, those are good. I think well, long like, videos and extreme cases are good, too. Like with Derek Moneyberg, I, I put out maybe like five to 10 videos on him. And when you search his name, like they all just pop up. And then like yeah. Spencer Cornelia and like Coffeezilla, they like jumped on the bandwagon and, and are, are ripping into him too. And I actually got an email. I don't think I've announced this publicly. I got an email that was like, if you don't take down the Derek videos, I'm going to fucking find you and kill you. And it was like, wow. I'm not fucking around. And we tried to trace it. It was through a VPN and all this shit. I didn't fucking take yeah. it down. I have various forms of uh, protecting myself out here. But, you know, there you know what 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 do i do run run you know cater to these fucking death threats online and then and then these fuckers you know they're going to fucking uh you know like put all this shit up oh he's a rapist he's a rapist he's a rapist people are trying to feed cough like there's people like trying to just annihilate my reputation online yeah. like modern life dating claimed on a, i haven't seen this someone emailed me hey he's claiming on a live on a live stream your girlfriend's an escort like the one, the girl you bring on your channel is escort. I brought her on a whole bunch of videos. I, like I said, I have thousands of pictures with her from, we've been dating over a year. Like I, I have like more proof in the world. And I, it's such a dumb claim anyways. Yeah. But you know, there's people trying to fabricate stuff to ruin my credibility to say, oh, he, you know, he, even RSC used to this back in the day. When I first started attacking Tyler, they were put, they were circulating around the community. Uh, they started the rapist thing. But it was just fully fabricated. As I said, never been charged or accused of rape. But they also said I was threatening Tyler's kids. I didn't even know he had kids at that time. Whoa. So, so these guys take really low, low blows. Yep. And then that that information, it's like the telephone game. That information circulates around. And they're like, whoa, what kind of guy is this? Threatening people's kids and raping people? Well, they're, they're addicted like, to money. They'll do anything to keep them the money train flowing, including destroy your rep rep reputation with false claims and bullshit. Or like set me up for a crime. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and I, I, you went to that last time, right? On our on Redman Group, I think. What happened with that? That's fucked up. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, that's yeah, that's like a private thing because you know there's various things I can't talk about. But yeah, um, I get it. You know, like at the end of the day, like for all those people that think that this is all just marketing, trying to do, like stir up drama, or, or there people are hating, or one of the most common comments I see is like, uh, those who focus on others are like like shouldn't be listened to. Like focus on yourself and like. Yeah. The fact is that 
this whole industry is dominated by a whole bunch of people that do not belong here. That That's are not right. giving value. Everyone's about like giving value. Making a video is not giving value. I okay? support this conclusion. Hundred percent. Make, making a video is not giving value. It's it's like it's like if you're dumping a whole bunch of sludge in the in the ocean, and you're like, yeah, like we're adding to the to the ecosphere of the ocean. No, you're fucking destroying it. All these guys are making guys like extremely frustrated, extremely depressed, extremely lonely. Ex I, I speak to these guys on the phone every day. I see the end result, and I have for a decade of all the guys that that get chewed up, spit out. And fucking end up in a mental hospital or end up broke, yeah. that end up extremely depressed, that end up in a, a 10 times worse place than when they came here seeking for help. And even though I fucking swear and I'm like rough around the edges and all this shit, I actually do care about these guys because I actually came from extreme, extreme social anxiety and general anxiety where I was like the most introverted guy out of 700 people in the whole fucking high school, yeah. where I was like afraid to leave the house at some points for, for fear of having panic attacks in public. And like never in a million years did I expect to be on the other side. But in a way, like I, I really feel for these guys and, I, and I, I really enjoy optimizing their system, each of these guys' systems when they come through my training from a uh, like a game perspective. And I just love the game and it's fun to optimize other people's strategies because I can't optimize my own that much anymore. But I see it over and over and over. It's always the same story. Hey, man, I went to this guy and this guy and this guy and this guy. I don't have no idea what I'm doing. And also, the, like the, the, the side note is now I'm acting super weird and I've lost a lot of time and money. And I'm ready to give up. And what? And, and then they end up, then they end up hating the manosphere. They end up hating pickup. They end up yep. hating uh, everything because they got burned by fraud. It's fucking it's yep. so sick. And guys are like ultra skeptical. Like, I always tell this story, but the 28 year old virgin that came to me from the UK, he had taken three RC programs, a Todd V and natural lifestyles, and one other one. <clears throat> Everyone promised in the world, no one delivered shit. He spent literally tens of thousands of dollars. He was very, very depressed, ready to give up, like bordering on on being su suicidal. And I, I showed him, here's all the stuff we're going to do, the results we've gotten. And he's like, everybody else said this stuff too, man. I don't, and, and then they're very skeptical against me, even though I have a real system. But he took the, the leap of faith, lost Virginia on day four, and got eight new girls in eight weeks. And it's like, and that's better than most, that's better than 99% of the community, I would say, in, in that time frame, a, a girl a week. Not many guys are doing that. Yep. Right? So, no, nah, not a lot. It's, that's super sad. Yeah, a lot of guys are getting ripped off, and then they join the, uh, insult community because they think that game doesn't work yeah it's it's a fucking shit show i mean i'm glad we're doing something about it i mean there's, there's no way to heal it if we don't do something about it period if there's not action taken that's progressive and positive in the right direction it's never going to change it's just, it's just going to get worse and worse and worse in this fucking snowball of fraud and it's sick it's sick man i know i was like you i grew up and i sucked with girls i found the pickup community and over a period of years and hard fucking work i changed that and so i can empathize with these guys right but even from day one, one of the reasons, by the way, the 21 convention, I think I pulled up here. You know, one of the reasons I started my company and I even the, specifically the videos are free to the world, the speeches. The whole purpose of that is because I hated the frauds. Even back in like 2007, when I made this decision, I was like, these fucking products are so expensive and half of them suck anyway. They suck in quality, like the filming sucks and all that. And then there's a half of it's bullshit anyway. This guy's like a loser, probably. So it just pissed me off. Even as like I was 18 years old, I'm like, fuck these people. I'm going to make a better product and it's going to be free. It's not going to be maybe the, the be all end all of the world, but it's going to be really fucking good. And it's going to be free, better quality, zero price, better content as best as I can anyway. So yeah, it's sick, man. These that, guys get that's burned. That's the interesting thing. Like I always tell guys, I can I can explain all of night game in about sixty to ninety minutes, like all the ins and outs of it. And I get guys that come to me taking twelve RC programs. It's what are you doing on those programs? And they, they don't know what to do in a nightclub. What what's happening on those True. programs? It's like if, it's like if you took. Uh, 12 things in any field to get better and you were like worse than when you started what, what is the conclusion there that, that it's your fault uh, when, when this is happening time and time again whose fault is it is it, is it just a whole bunch of, of guys that just can't apply the principles yeah. they don't want to face the real truth of what's really happening yep. uh, we got yeah, I think I gotta get in on these uh, roast videos if kind yeah of man me do it man bit. yeah, yeah go as after most the of content at least positive. Exactly. Exactly. Go after him. We got two super chats, by the way, to get to. And uh, this one's pretty good. I think we can all hit, especially YouTube. So what's your guys' opinions on followers of Rolo, Rich, Donovan becoming resentful and hateful towards women? Thanks for their advice. Their shitty advice. I think it's fucking horrible. Uh, I didn't even, I, to be to be honest, I, I wasn't too, too familiar with Red Pill shit because I was focused on the, the pickup stuff but until the past 
bunch of months where I've been going down that rabbit hole of seeing like it's the yeah. same exact problem in the pickup world. But now you have I'm getting on the phone with these guys and they're giving me like the whole background. And it, what's kind of funny is like some of these guys are like jacked and like very confident and they're like single digit lay count and they're like red pill theory experts, but they still have no idea how to because no one's teaching them dating strategy. Yeah. And they're like, dude, like to be honest, like all that content is like very toxic and I'm, I'm like very hateful and resentful towards women. I've heard it countless times. Yeah. So the effect of that content is to be a, a mental masturbation theory junkie and then like not like women and, and try to be like warring against women. And I think that's extremely unhealthy and it's not even necessary. Alex? Yeah, th there's a bunch of lies that are told as truth in the Red Bull community. You have hot girls are horrible to be around. You don't want, yeah. you don't want, to, you don't want to have a hot girlfriend because she's going to be miserable. <laughs> and people say that as if it's like a objective. At least, like at least the coaches are consistent, right? The coaches are consistent with that. Yeah, yeah, like fat women. I've like had hot girlfriends. So they're not like they're not miserable <laughs> to be around. This is like the dumbest logic ever. I will say that this guy says everyone was hooked on RSD, and let's call RSD out. You guys have been talking about them a little bit. Now they're kind of you know mis they're reconfiguring how they operate in the business and model and the branding and all that shit. Whatever, it's still RSD, right? I think they had the biggest cult ever in the manosphere in terms of like something Agreed. that approached a real cult, they had a real, and I've met a lot of these guys in my life and they're, they sucked with women yeah, and they're yeah, super, yeah. super hardcore RSD. It's like, there's so many other options. Like, why are you obsessed with RSD? They're, they were obsessed to the point of absurdity. It's weird. Cause and, they put I out mean, a lot of content. They put out a lot of advertising and they reached a lot of people. Uh, a lot of people were obsessed with Pandora's box and Tao Badass. I got on the phone with guys. Hey, I've been implementing Tao Badass for years. I've been with one girl. Uh, I'm like, Hey, you know, it's a scam system, right? Oh, that makes sense now. Yep. <laughs> I think Mark Levine has only gotten worse at over the years. In 2015, they were better than they are now. They used to at least give a little bit of value, I think. When I got into game 2014, there was some decent content coming from RSD. All those old videos have been taken down. You can't find the old practical videos. That doesn't exist anymore. They, they crossed a lot of lines, though, too. They, they This is like for a fact. I told the reporter this from Australia. They were actively advocating that when a girl, when you're pulling and a girl's trying to like, like, like friends are trying to contact her to like disable her phone or hide it, which, is, which is straight illegal, blatantly illegal. Whoa. They're, they're, they're pushing that in videos and on the forums. It's not slander. That's a fact. I have screenshots wow. of it. That's sick. That's sick, man. It's fucked up. Another super chat to get to, by the way. Thanks for the five buckaroos, Jake Ripple Snake. Anthony, Anthony. Uh, I was saying in a video, my name's not Anthony, it's John, but okay. Yeah. Uh, he's asking about, this is me, I think he's asking about. Oh, why, okay. didn't you, why didn't you expose Donovan after seeing his old fat wife? This has been in the comments, and I've actually been responding to it a little bit on the video. Uh, basically, it's complicated, and I plan to do a formal video response to this specific question, maybe a few of them, because I actually wanted to put this in the original video, but then I cut out like four segments at the end to keep it under three hours long. So I realized it was going to be four hours long. And I'm like, I can't fucking do that. This is like stupid. Who the fuck's going to watch a four hour video? Three oh. hours is pushing that already. I mean, it's like absurd, right? But it Wait, they're asking, why didn't you do it sooner? I and mean, you guys were friends yeah. too. I mean, you're not just going to just throw someone on the bus yeah. immediately. <laughs> exactly. I mean, that's, yeah, that's why I said it. it's complicated. I met her in 2018 with him. And the first thing I thought in the middle of running a huge fucking conference, that was the biggest conference I ever did. It was like 200. I'm, so, I'm so jealous. No, yeah. The, th the first thing I saw was like, this guy could do a lot better than this chick. Why is he with her? And that's when she's dolled up. That's when she had everything. She was dressed, you know, she had like a dress on or something, all the makeup and shit. I'm fucking on two. I'm on like, you know, less than two hours of sleep for five days in a row. I don't have time. I take a, I take a mental note of it, but I'm not like, all right, Don has a fat girlfriend. Destroy him immediately. <laughs> like, this is stupid. You can't operate like that as an entrepreneur, right? You take note of it and then you just kind of keep things cool. And then over time, the lies built up with Donovan, basically. At the end of the day, what happened was Donovan told a lot of lies, not just to me, to a lot of these guys, these secrets, these dark fucking secrets. And he wanted good men to tell, like, hold the fucking shit bag of these secrets. And it's like, bro, I'm not going to do that, especially if you're going to fucking attack me. You're crazy. Your fraud need to be called out anyway. And now you've attacked me like multiple times repeatedly trying to fucking, you know, assassinate my character in public. Fuck you. Time for you to what, die. What was the final straw in that relationship? Like, what was the thing that he did where you're like, him, fuck this him, guy? Him, uh, I mean, basically attacking me recently. Like I had mm -hmm. talked to him in months. He he walked away from 21. He wanted me to film his events and shit and all this bullshit for him, like film, film, film. And I thought about doing it to make money. And then I was like, nah, this guy's fucking seriously fucked up. There's a lot of bullshit going on. People don't know. He's toxic and he's dangerous. I want to get away from him. He's oh. dangerous like a bomb that's going to blow up, which I think is what's happening now because he's a fucking fraud. If it wasn't me, it was going to be somebody else that took him down. And so I was like, I don't want to, even if he's going to pay me all this money to film his shit, I don't want it. I don't want thirty, forty thousand dollars to film your shit because you're a fraud and you're gonna—it's gonna explode in your face. And I don't want to be a fucking around you when it does. 
So he walked away from me and then months go by and then he starts attacking me and then I let it go. I'm like, oh man, I want to fucking kill this dude. Nope. Let me let it go. See if he walks away. Nope. Attacks me again. I'm like, nope. Now he's dead. I was it shitty, to hit me. It was shitty attack. So like, I, I, have a, I have a video out about me now. Yeah. John Anthony exposed and they're basically ragging on me for putting up infield footage of an Asian student <sighs> pulling a six foot white girl. And they're like, oh, all the white coaches just want to like show like a token Asian pull. I have lots of Asian pulls, lots of every, every ethnicity pulling on camera. Um, but the, it wasn't, nothing was exposed. It, it was just like showing like me with infield and they're like, Oh, I think he helped on that pull. There's nothing exposed. So when Donovan attacked you, it was like, there, was there anything actually exposed? No, he's just lying. I mean, I, I almost went through that in a segment, like the specific lies as the initial plan was to address some of the specific things he was lying to me about. And I did go through a few of them and I'm like, Candace Owens defend Molyneux the hypocrisy of that and shit like that. But he was also saying he never trusted me and all this bullshit. And I have text after text after text where this guy asked me serious shit in life, not just about the private marriage. He wanted me to like represent his business to Apple and stuff on like the App Store, like legally represent his, his fucking app on the App Store. And I'm like, you don't fucking trust me? You wanted me to like lie to Apple and like be like potentially in fucking legal trouble for this shit. You don't trust me? I don't I shouldn't fucking trust you, number one. But all kinds of shit. I mean, he told me his real name, he told me his wife's real name. I'm like, you didn't <laughs> trust me. You definitely trusted me. You're just saying it now because you're butthurt ex-girlfriend, you're butthurt little bitch. Because you keep trying to attack me, attack me, attack me, and I fucking keep walking away. I'm like, walk away, dude, walk away. You're gonna get killed. You're gonna get killed. Walk away, man. And what happened? Now he got fucking slaughtered. People said it was the smoothest kill ever on YouTube. Smooth, man. Flawless victory. I gotta, I gotta watch the whole thing. I haven't, I haven't. Uh, it's like three hours, right? I, I've seen yeah. parts now. But. Yeah, yeah I, wa I watched the whole video. It was definitely very. Interesting. My modern life dating, my modern life dating assassination is like five, six months in the making, and it, and yeah. I've, I've been pressing my assistant like we have to wrap this up. Like, we were promising it for Christmas. And then we people keep sending more shit, and then we keep adding to it. But it's like over 100 slides. It's going to be a multi-hour thing as well. So yeah, and I think I think there needs to be more of these like thorough, yeah. thorough like nail in the coffin type videos. Yep. Rather it's than the just best like, way to do it because you know they want Donovan was trying to bait me basically. Trying to I knew what he was doing. He was full of shit. Like when he was getting interviewed by John Samez, John Samez didn't know. He was just interviewing Donovan, right? He didn't. I mean, maybe he knew something, suspected it, like he talked about later on Tony's show, Tony Bruno's channel. But I knew what Donovan was doing. He was trying to rile me up, trying to rile me up to bait me into fucking going on there. And then him screaming at me or something or trying to lie and shit more. And in the heat of the moment, you can't disprove that. I can't pull up fucking text off my phone in a mid live stream. I was like, no, I'm going to fucking chill out. I'm going to think about this, how I want to respond, what I want to do. And then I'm going to act. I'm going to like analyze it, you know, plan it, execute and fucking take action. That's exactly what I did. I wasn't dumb enough to get roped into him trying to yell at me or curse at me or something on... Uh, or, you know, whatever attacked me. This do, you, do you think any of these guys would, would be brave enough to fight in a no, ring? Zero, do you want to, zero, do you want, zero do any of them have fighting chance. skills? No, it's all, it's all bullshit. No, I was going to challenge. I, I actually had in the Rich Cooper response. I didn't I didn't mention this yet live. I had a whole thing challenging him to a fight. I and mean, I have I have like extensive like uh, Muay Thai, BJJ, Krav Maga and, and Machida Karate. Dude, all these all these guys. People kept saying Donovan's going to fight me. I'm like, bro, are you fucking kidding me? Like, I know this guy. This guy is a huge. It, sound, it sounds like BS crazy. to talk like that. But I think it yeah. would be like fun. It would be a fun event to, to televise beating one of these guys asses. He will literally know it will never happen because they'll never they'll never get within 10 feet of you. They're scared of you. Like I have texts of MLD. Well, Rich, is pretty big. Rich is pretty big. Rich is a big guy, though. He's a big dude, but he's a big pussy. He's a big beta male. Go on his old channel. He's all these old channels on YouTube. You can see what a fucking loser he is. What a fucking beta male. All the, he's on TRT and shit now. He talks about it on his channel and steroids and shit. That doesn't make you a badass. He's still a fucking huge pussy by the end of the day. Now people think, Alex, oh, he's good. Me and Alex both are on TRT right now as well. Yeah, that's yeah, fine. Yeah, he's nothing, nothing wrong with TRT. But wasn't wasn't he yeah, married yeah. to uh, some single mom or something like that? Yep, yep. She dropped, I think yeah, he got dropped, I think he had divorce rape too. Which I think is fine. I, I have nothing against single moms, but I think if your whole message is don't go for single moms, you shouldn't marry a single mom. Yeah, exactly. It's the it's the hypocrisy. I mean, everyone's going to have an opinion in, uh, on these issues and stuff, even like something like a TRT. It's when you're going to lie about it or pretend you're some hard ass, you know, for doing these things and you're, or you're a hypocrite too, right? Yeah. Oh, and, you know, I, Donovan was bitching about make women great again. Why are you wearing the hat, bro? Why is it on your woman? Like, what the fuck are you doing? Like, it's just stupid, man. A lot of it's just yeah, dumb. The quick, the quick note with the TRT, like, like, um, I don't, I don't think I mentioned it much on my videos, but I started a couple of years ago because my levels came out like low, very low 300s, like 305, something like that, which is like mm -hmm. level of a nine year old man. I think I fucked my endocrine system uh, just with some, I, I've been drank almost daily for 15 years. And I was also like getting shitty sleep, uh, being out of the clubs, you know, very late, not, not sleeping very much. Um, and I used to have like a fairly poor diet, just, you know, going hard at, at night game and stuff can be uh, pretty toxic on the rest of your life for in terms of like health, living a healthy life. Um, 
you know, so so my my levels were just low. But if you do the research in the TR, it's not like steroids, or anything. it's just putting your levels back to where they were when you were like in your low twenties, late teens. We're not even meant biologically to live much past thirty, anyways. With modern medicine and all this stuff, all you're doing is just putting it back to where it should have been before. So, um, yeah, that's why. And what, what did you take? What did you get? Were you low level as well, Alex? I was super low. I had Lyme disease. I had chronic Lyme disease for. Oh yeah, yeah, Alex. Had Lyme I was disease. pretty much bedridden for six months. After that, my testosterone levels were shot. Yeah, yeah. yeah these guys will never fight. They won't even. It's you got to be kidding me, man. These guys are massive fucking losers. Like they're so fucking. Uh, MLD. MLD is a child stock number one. Like you know, how fucking head. You have to be to stock children around in public. <laughs> That's extremely fucking weird. That's one step shy. Well, of I don't understand people. the whole story. So he's just posting random kid pictures on his own Instagram, saying yes. like how cute. I'll show you right now. It's crazy. It's fucking. I've never seen. I've never seen anyone do this and post it in public. It's insane. People. People showed me too that he was. He was following a tranny and liking a, a tranny's shirtless photos. Of, or, yeah. or uh, yeah, this one or something like that. I don't know. It's like gay stuff. I don't know. <laughs> there's, all, there's. There's. If you go to um, MGTOW dictionary, you'll see videos where they go into this more extensively. We do on the Mano Purge as well, chapter one. But he just takes pictures of children constantly and calls them cute and stuff. They don't even know they're being photographed. These kids are running away from him. This, this is was public. in Japan, I assume? It's mostly in Japan, yeah. He's at, at pub. Why is he taking pictures of these kids at, at, and he's playing and shit? He's like a peeping Tom, like on little kids and shit, man. Why is he taking a picture of this girl in cute braids? Why? What is the purpose of this fucking picture? Yeah, that's super like, weird. Yeah, super yeah. weird. I just uh, found out about this recently. We, we have like 20 or more damning things before this even. In the, the long video we're gonna do on this fucking retard. Yep. So this is a really. I just want to show this one. This is really fucking weird. This is a little girl in Japan with her mom or dad or something. Why is he taking a picture of this little girl? What is the fucking purpose of this? He has tons of this shit. Like it is. There's no plausible. He even owns them on video. Like I took that. It wasn't at. It was not at Disney World. It was at this place. And it's like I don't <laughs> give a fuck where you were. Why are you taking pictures of children? There's no legitimate purpose to doing this without someone's consent. Zero. Zero. There's Unless no legitimate related. purpose of doing it even with someone's consent. Like, why the fuck would you take a picture? Yeah, of that's really girl? Cool. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's, that's, that's the thing with some of these guys, man. It's like bad enough that he's ripping our products, that he's like making up tons of shit, mm -hmm. that, that he's in bed with like trannies or whatever, married to like <laughs> one Japanese chick, all this stuff. And then, and then on top of it, he's he's taking pictures of kids. It's like yeah. it's like he's already it's it's already like a steaming pile of shit, and then you're adding in like like potential pedophilia in there. Like a pile <laughs> of sharks, man. When you got sharks, you got the shits, bro. <laughs> yeah, you gotta, you gotta have all your memes. Too. You gotta have all your memes in one place. Some of them are pretty good. Yeah, I'm trying, man. I'm working my meme magic, bro. The meme magic, it's good shit, man. Have you ever had like? Because I've had guys come and try to put strikes on my channel over the the video. Have you had anybody like try to privacy complaint and strike down your? As of yet, no. Uh, I was I was concerned about that with Donovan because I knew he'll I do thought, that to my channel. Yeah. I saw you like to the YouTube reviewers. Let it be known that. Like, <laughs> yep. Yep, because if he goes after now, it's suicide. He'll lose his channel instantly. If a YouTube employee or contractor reviews that video and they find out he's evading multiple channel terminations, he's fucked instantly. If you're evading a channel ban, they will instantly ban you again as soon as they find you, which is are exactly they, what Are they trying to ban him right now? They will in a heartbeat if they find him, yeah. He's bitched what? about this repeatedly in public. I used to talk to him about it. He would get banned off YouTube. He'd start a new channel. It would get banned. I'd he build a new one. He does it all the time. He's been banned off Twitter. They keep finding him and they ban him. YouTube, it's happened two or three times. It's a matter of time. It's a ticking time bomb until they find him anyway. Whether or not I did anything, he's just gonna lose his channel because he's a fucking idiot. So that's probably the only thing I can sympathize with because the uh, cancel culture is insane. I've had my Facebook group banned. It is. I just have no mercy and no empathy and no sympathy for them because they're fucking frauds. I'm like, yeah, cancel culture is gay, but you're a fraud scamming people out of money. So I don't really give a fuck at that point. RSD. Shit. I had a super, super, super valuable Facebook forum where I was posting almost daily with just a massive value of thousands of guys in it. And I made a post that said, here's like all the dirt I have on all the RST instructors. Within a day or two, the whole group got nuked. And then I was at a, a conference in Poland. I had an Instagram where I posted like 300 girls in a row. And I said, I was ripping on Tyler. And then I said, here's my, <laughs> I said, here's my, uh, here's my Instagram. Make sure you guys sub or, or whatever, follow. And, um, uh, it went down during the talk. So they killed my Facebook group full value. They killed my Instagram. And then on my YouTube, they've put like five strikes over the years. I, I was, yep. for those of you that don't know, it's three strikes and they take your channel down. That's but right. they reset 90 days. And I had two strikes on a few different occasions, but I got a lawyer involved. 
and basically like dropped the hammer on them. They haven't struck a video since because yep. what they're doing is abusing the copyright system. They can lose their fucking channel over that. I know. I'm, I'm ready. To, I have an attorney too from my company that I have on tap at, uh, for a while now, like a couple of years. And if they fuck with me, I'll go to war with them hard and hard instantly as fast as I can. I don't want to lose my channel. Oh, yeah. And I would publicize the whole thing too. Oh, yeah, for sure. They'll do it. They'll take my channel down if they find any opportunity to do so. We've never had a channel strike though, ever. And I don't ever want one. I hope we never do. But if they find an opportunity, they'll do it just, just to keep the fraud going. They don't care about it's all bullshit. They'll just lie and manipulate the system like you're Max, saying. Yeah, fraud. Max put Max put one on me recently and, and I yeah. appealed it one. And nice. the videos fill up. Nice. Fuck yeah. Fuck these frauds, man. They got to burn, dude. The fraud father, tales from the roll up hill, all this shit, dude. <laughs> <laughs> he looks like the crypt keeper. Right? How old is he? Yeah, he he's does. Like, good. He's probably 53, I, I think. 53. I used to probably. love that show. That was a good show. Yeah, got this. This keeps going, man. It's so easy. They're such losers that it really inspires me, you know? That's why they get so good. Like, I really hate them because I know what pieces of shit they are in real life. More so than guys I don't even know. Like, I know the RSD guys are saying are a bunch of losers, a bunch of frauds. I get it. They're a bunch of scammers. But I know these guys. You know, Rolo's been sitting right here with me at this fucking table at my house. I know this guy, right? I know these Rich Cooper and Ryan Stone, these guys. I know what fucking losers they are. And I know a lot of, obviously, with Donovan, the sharp mama, that went, that was a three hour documentary I created off that fucking scumbag. But that's also why it pisses me off. You know, I have like very visceral experience with these guys. You know, first name, first hand, you know, handshake kind of basis. That's what makes me so fucking mad. It's like, I know these guys. I know for that's a fact. That's how it was with me and Tyler. I, I worked for RSD in 2012. Yeah. And I saw firsthand countless lies and countless fabrication of results and skills. I witnessed it personally. And I lived with Manhor, the, who used to be a, a, a popular coach in the pickup world. He was a and speaker he, like, 21, he, twice. He, yeah. And he was like, RST's best kept, kept secret is Tyler's only been with 50 girls. And he was like, um, you know, this was, this was years ago, but, but still he was purporting it was like this giant number um and he, and he was saying he's like i've caught him on like over 100 lies and, and i caught him myself personally and i tell the stories on my channel but guys cling to this idea like they're like no way man like they, they they try to make arguments like oh uh you know they said a lot of bad stuff about him in the book the game but he's already explained to us that that was all like just man. people hating and i believe that mean, too back in the day i'm gonna they comment on this I'm gonna, back on, in I'm gonna the game on this Hang on. You said that you caught Tyler lying to you a lot, right? And that's kind yeah. of what led you on him being a huge liar. That's how I got Rolo. I used to be a big Rolo fan, genuinely. 2016. I, would, I, was, I, would, I don't know if I was like a Tyler fan, but I bought into the hype. It's hard not to. Yeah, exactly. Same with Rolo, man. When I found Rolo's stuff, you know, I was like, I, I had a long pickup background, but not this red pill shit. It was very interesting to me. It was captivating. And I was a huge fan of Rolo, genuinely. That's why, you know, in the end, it was such a big a head fuck for people. They're like, what the fuck happened? Because I was a big fan of Rolo. I was genuine. I was real. I was a really big supporter of him. And then I caught him lying to me about small stuff. Very small stuff at first at the convention in 2017. And then a few weeks after, he came, he came back to Orlando for us to meet Milo Yiannopoulos, the speaker that was speaking at something else. We wanted to meet him and get him at 21, the convention. But I caught him. He kept lying to me. Even Socrates one time. He lied to Socrates in front of me. Me and Socrates at the same time, basically. And we kind of looked at each other like, did you catch that? And I was like, yeah, I fucking caught that. It was a lie. And it's small shit. That doesn't matter, right? You know, airport shit, this and that. Uh, just different, just little tiny stuff. I even caught him, for example, filming a speech at the convention that I told him like three times in the speech, don't film it. You can film it for five minutes and then cut it off. Rolo's like, yeah, I got it. I got it. I got it. I'm like, okay. What does he do? He films the whole fucking thing. I'm like, are you fucking kidding me? I fucking told you to your face three times. I have to film this fucking thing, the whole thing. And you filmed the whole fucking thing. And he's like, oh, uh, I forgot. I'm like, you didn't fucking forget. You're just lying to my face. Like, don't ever fucking do that again. I'll kill you. Not literally, maybe, but that's kind of that was kind of the attitude. Like, don't fucking lie to me in my own house, in my own convention. You're gonna sit there and fucking lie to me. That's my house, motherfuckers. These are my rules. Don't film this shit. I told you you could film it for like five minutes. You filmed it for fucking sixty-five minutes. It's on your fucking Twitter. Take it down or I'm gonna fucking strike it. So it was little stuff at first, and I was like, man, this is a big alarm bell. It's a big red flag because when people lie about small things, they lie about big things. When you catch people fucking lying to you about little tiny shit, it's like motherfucker, like it's a liar. As someone who can't stop lying, it's a compulsive liar like Donovan. Donovan never stops lying like Rolo. They're compulsive. Even about shit he doesn't need to lie about. Lie, yeah, Tyler, lie, yeah, lie, Tyler lie. Too. That's yeah, how it was with me and David Swift. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, fuck. Do you know? Do you know who David David is? Johnson. I don't know. I don't know. He's a little fat guy. From, uh, <laughs> he, was old, he was my old business partner. He used to lie to me about the dumbest things ever. Yeah. I'm just showing off more memes just to get to stir up cognitive dissonance in these guys. <laughs> this is actually a pretty important meme because Rolo, this is how actually Rolo sells the Rolo pill. It's a little miniature cult or like internet cult. He uses the red pill. He kind of steals it from the red pill community, which has its own issues. You guys can criticize that or not all day long. 
that's distinct from the Rolo. And they, over the years, they've actually gotten away from Rolo. They get, they get annoyed by him and they kind of see through his bullshit too. So he used to be this like hailed godfather there. And now that's not really the case. He's been exposed by the guys there like uh, GLO and stuff that attack him for pointing out that he's a fucking massive hypocrite. This fucking loser boomer guitarist that doesn't know how to bang women talking to a bunch of guys about how to bang women. It's, just, it's absurd. It is truly, truly, deeply absurd. That's that's the thing. Like, and and you see it time and time again. Like, um, you know, just thinking of random examples, like the like uh, Alex Social, um, Alex Four Week Natural. He's tried to kill himself a bunch of times. He's depressed. He's like in massive debt. Like, still has a massive alcohol problem. Those are all. I'm not knocking any of those problems. But then he claims to be the ultimate internals guy, the ultimate like, you know, he, there's no reason you're not enough. But he's living the exact opposite. It's that inverse so, shit, that inverse projection, man. That's what yeah, that's that's what I have a big problem with. Like, don't claim to be like <clears throat> the ultimate internals guy and take selfies in the bathroom, like crying in the bathtub, saying I'm sad. Right. What was uh, Cooper bitching about you on Twitter? Looks like he was attacking. Here, can you can you open that? Yeah. Well, yeah. well, scan scan until you see. I post the tweet. Well, there's me showing that I don't live in a box. I actually live in a two story penthouse. Uh, scroll a little bit more. There we go. Right there. All right. Okay. If your PUA icon is claiming to be, have 1,500 plus ladies, it's 1,339. He's doing that for effect. Uh, looks like a fat can of smashed assholes. Looks poor, lives in a box. So no amount of game solves that lie. So I went on, I showed, here's a two-story penthouse. Here's girls that are living here. Uh, what else? I, I, I have a video that's over an hour long where I show all the proof of banging over 1,000 girls. Um, the looks poor, they, they all have a problem, the fact that I wear tank tops. Ryan Stone was like, you know, oh, it's so. I'm not gonna put on a fucking like nice shirt or a or a suit or something like that. I don't give a fuck. And it, you know, a lot of those guys, anyways, are just doing images for the camera. This is uh, my channel is pretty raw and real and stuff. I'm aware that wear whatever the fuck I feel like wearing, right? So it's not not relevant. But he couldn't even mention my name. Ryan and in um in yep. uh, Rolo couldn't mention my name, and they're trying to re reiterate his points. Oh, what did Rich call him? A fat can of smashed assholes. I'm showing like here I am in great shape. Like they're all very I'm, passive. They're very passive aggressive because of what they are because they're beta. Like men, yeah. men who are masculine don't do that shit. Oh, that one guy. No, motherfucker. What's my name? Say the name. Call it That's out. That's what I said in the video. Did you watch that video? I haven't seen it. No, you have a Ryan video. Of I was like, I was like, say my name, pussies. The next time yeah. you guys talk about me, I know you're gonna watch this. Say my fucking name. Like, what's the? And then their in their logic, they're probably thinking, oh, don't give that guy any exposure. To, you know, people will go check out his channel. Maybe find some real info on this stuff. Uh, mostly they're just pussies. They're scared to fucking go after you. It, I mean, they don't like be mentioning your name anyway just to fucking uh, prevent anybody from even finding you. They're trying to basically manipulate and control the audience is why they do that. It's passive aggressive because they're weak beta males who are, they hate conflict. They can't deal with it. They are scared of you attacking them. Like, they'll never fight you. That'll never happen. In they're, they're so <laughs> like, <laughs> everyone everyone keeps saying that, like, Fresh and Fit and um, and Rolo and Ryan, like, respond instantly to any kind of haters or any any person, like, talking crap. And they're like they're all silent about what you say. <laughs> like that really says something. Yep. I'm trying to all find they do the, is, uh, all they do is make baseless here. claims. I think I might so, have found this. Yeah, here it is. I found the Donovan video. Let me see if I can get. I'm gonna work with it. Go ahead. Yeah, but my point was um, with with the rich stuff. It's like he doesn't know anything about me or about my game or anything like that. He's just they they, they think uh, they, that's like the big argument is that I live in a, in a studio apartment or a basement. I've already shown it's a two story penthouse. It's like actually a really big place. Um, but they're just trying to make like pot shot attacks because I'm coming at their friends and they're promoting all the classic scammers like like Rolo Rolo brings modern life dating and Myron on their shows. Yep. Right. They're all they're all it's, it's like the dating syndicate. They're all it's a whole bunch of scammers cross promoting each other and, yep. and getting each other's backs. And then anyone that comes at them, they try to just like ad hominem attack them. Well, the irony is that Rolo on his blog for years, the fraud father, would bitch and bitch and bitch and bitch and bitch endlessly. Look at his blog. Just type grifter and all this snake oil shit. He bitched about all the shit for years. And what does he do? He's the kingpin of fucking promoting this crap now, right? All these courses and all this bullshit from these losers. They don't have any game. They have no game. They have no understanding of women. They have no positive relationships with women. They have no receipts. They don't bang any hot women. They almost don't bang any woman at all. And Don, in the sharp mama's case, he just bangs a fat old woman. I mean, it's crazy. Like this dude brags that his chick is like 37, you know, and this hottie and shit, and she's disgusting and old. That's that's reality, you know. No hate. I mean, if you're fat and ugly, I mean, it's just kind of the way things are. You can improve it, I guess. But don't fucking look at it and tell me it's a 10. It's like this is a, this is absolute fraud. It's sick. Give me sick give me two is. seconds to piss. You guys continue. I'll be yeah, right. I'm gonna take a piss as well. Hang on one second. Okay. Commercial break, guys. I'm gonna actually a video set up as well. Why uh, we're going here? We'll pull up. Uh, oh, here we go. Wait. Yeah, perfect. 
All right, we're getting this ready for you guys. I'll play when they get back so we can have some responses for y'all. Uh, in the meantime, make sure you check out the new Donna Dusa. Uh, there we go. The t-shirt. Hope you guys pick it up. Check it out. It's a hot new shirt, $21. A couple of variations of it. Got different colors and shit, different sizes. Got the tank top for you uh, Alpha Gym Bros, uh, Gym Meatheads. Congratulations. You can wear it and show your support and uh, show your support against the frauds. I'm going to go through the uh, chat with you guys as well and see what's going on here. There's so much chat I can barely fucking keep up today. Let me see what's up. It's like a cult the way they pram people. Yep. It's sick, man. It's sick. Someone needs to crush MLD. Yep. I'm hoping John Anthony comes through with that. You know, he's talking about this big video on MLD. That'd be great. I just, uh, I could do one. I just don't feel like doing it. I'm just kind of tired of doing it. Obviously, I just put a huge one out. So I'm hoping that's a good one. Yeah. I don't care about. Oh, God. Real quick, on MLD, I've had an assistant. Um, like, I've been sent countless emails on stuff. He's, he's compiled a hundred slide thing and then we have like tons of video clip footage it's gonna be like it's gonna be like what you did at donovan yeah good yeah slaughter him, man flawless victory dude it's like mortal Kombat, dude fucking chop his head off when do you think gonna come out um i'm really really i've, I've been really pressing my assistant to, to finalize it so I'm, I'll, I'll i'll commit to this week like 100 percent this week nice. and make, you need um, memes to make some memes dude yeah yeah, let's fucking get some buzz going around it. He responded to the first one. The first one I showed proof that he copied my product and, and a bunch of other stuff. And he got on his little uh, hot hot dude queer party uh, stream <laughs> and said his main his main rebuttal points were, oh, he got it wrong. I'm not in the Philippines. I'm in Japan. He repeated that like 10 times apparently. And then um, he, he mentioned the fact that I had an alcohol problem uh, repeatedly. And that was about the extent of his defense. Yeah. Let's get in the Don. You asked about the Donovan video earlier, where he responded. To my knowledge, this is the first time he's uh, he's um, addressed it in public. This is like one in the morning the other night in Miami. You notice he's wearing sunglasses. He looks like he's on a he looks like he's an extra that got lost on Scarface from like thirty years ago. I mean, look at the shit he's wearing. It's like super Dude, I, shit. I just watched that last night. For, I just, haven't watched it in a while. Yeah. Oh, the movie. You guys can hear this. Anyhow, let me go. Special guests as well. Donovan I'm, Sharp. I'm Donovan Sharp. Building. Yeah, I'm done. So, I'm sure if that's all you guys don't know. Welcome back to Miami, man. Yeah, hey, listen, I'm actually, um, I recently found out I was married. So let's pause right here with the, we'll get into it as well, but are we? Go, let's actually go through it and we'll do it smooth and then we'll break it down too if you guys want to get into it. Welcome back to Miami, man. Yeah, hey, listen, I'm actually, um, I recently found out I was married. Um, yeah, yeah. So uh, Dev and I, we get up and um, we're, you know, uh, watching this dude on YouTube and I'm like, Dev, you got to come in here and see this and we're watching this. <laughs> And it was almost three hours long. And I was like, and I was like, wait a minute. Like at the end of it, I was like, holy shit, I think are we we're married. So we decided to jump on a plane, come down here to Miami, and uh we're on our honeymoon. So uh I guess wait, did you guys elope? We uh, listen, I, we were married before I even realized it, but there, I mean it was it was such it was such compelling evidence. I mean, all sorts of Photoshop and all I mean, I was like, hey, you know what? You convinced me, so uh, that's why I'm here, man. Are you happy? Say again. Are you happy? Oh, shit, I stay happy. <laughs> stay happy. Right. Dude, he got. This so is such a dumb way of defending yourself. Because yeah. if someone accused me of something that is blatantly not true, I would just say, "Yo, yeah. this is not true for these reasons. This is a dumb argument." But he's using sarcasm, so he de technically does not have to lie. So he's like, "Oh yeah, you know, uh, we're, we're married." Well, ha -ha. Number one, number one, no one else brought it up at him. They didn't ask. It. it looks like they didn't ask him about it, as far as I can tell. Right? He just brings this shit up. So number one, because now he's thinking about it, he's obsessed with it, he's scared by it. He's hiding behind his fucking sunglasses. These girls see right through it too. If you watch their body language and the shit they say to them, they can see right through it. That girl got him at the end. Are you happy? I mean, that's brutal, man. Brutal. They see right through it. He's fucking miserable with a fat girl. Can we? Can we? Can we grand reveal something? It's totally up to Alex. I don't care. Uh, well, no, well, no, keep talking. I'll text Alex and ask him if, it's, if we're allowed. Well, you know what I'm talking about, right? Yeah, I think I know what it is. There's a problem. Are we allowed to, are we allowed to mention? Can we mention that? Yeah, yeah, you can mention it. I don't care. So Alex was filming infield, which I applaud him for doing because a lot of guys have been asking for him to film infield. So he's starting to film infield footage, and he and Myron uh, ran into him during this infield filming. Uh, Myron from Fresh and Fit, and so there's, this is captured on camera. Basically, he was like threatening you and stuff like that. Can you go into what happened? Yeah, basically, I was uh, walking with a girl, and I hear someone yelling my name. Yo, Alex, Alex. I was like, yo, but I'm like really focused on the conversation, and he's like, don't ever mention my name. Don't ever mention my name. 
And I was like, what? And I realized it was Myron. I was like, okay, dude, cool. And then I walk with the chick, uh, get her number, and then we part ways. And then he's like waiting on the corner. He's like, yo, man, don't ever mention me. Don't ever mention me again. I was like, or what? Like, like if he just kindly asked me, like, hey, man, you know, can you please not mention me? Like, I probably would respect that because I try to be cool to most people. But he was just like demanding. I was like, no, like I'm free to talk about whoever I want. I mentioned him once in my video for two seconds saying that one of the things he says is incorrect, which I stand by to this day. I mean, what he said was that if a girl flakes on you, it's because she's banging a hotter guy. That's not true. Most of the time, if a girl flakes on you, she's yeah, watching, stuff, stuff she's comes hanging up with your girlfriend. She's watching yeah. friends. She's on social media. Some of the time, she's banging another guy, but it's not the majority of the time. It's not even 50% of the time. So he got like really triggered by that. And so he was just basically like ranting and raving and demanding that, um, you know, I never mentioned him again. And uh, I was just like, no, like, I'll keep talking about whoever I want. And then he called me, he called me later that night. And he was like, to his credit, he was a lot more cool. He was like, yeah, man, you know, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to like, make it seem like I was insinuating. I just really don't like it when you guys mentioned me. I was like, dude, like, I'm sorry. Like, I won't, I won't attack you personally, but if you say something that I disagree with, I am going to bring it up on my podcast. Like, it is what it is. No, they're just super insecure beta males. Like, this is how fucking losers oh. act. Like, if, if he had a really serious problem with you, he should have just fought you in the street. And obviously, this guy is just, like, super unhinged. He seems like a... Well, that, that would have been a really bad decision for me. First of all, I walk around with my dog, so my dog would fucking bite him right in the balls if he even attacked can you, me. Can Second you bring up my Iron video from my, from my playlist? Second of all, I'll put charges for assault and make sure... Hang on, hang on, hang on, time. hang on. Let's not get off topic here. Let's let's roast Donovan a little more here. This is, <laughs> this, is, this is too tempting. This is, number one, this is just fucked. I mean, this is some John Travolta, Scarface shit going on. Who dresses this guy's mother? Probably his wife. I think this is what happens when your wife dresses you is you do this kind of shit, you know? No, this is this is you get to you get a window into what he thinks of himself that he's the cool guy now. Yeah. Listen, yeah. I'm actually um I recently found out I was married. Um yeah, yeah. So uh Dev and I we get up and um we're you know uh watching this dude on YouTube and I'm like, Dev, you got this dude, this dude, I've met these people repeatedly in real life. I paid this guy thousands of dollars, he knows exactly what my name is. I'm my channel is like three times the size of his. I've been on Piers Morgan and all over New York Times and New York Post and shit. The the fact it's like the same shit they do to you guys, right? They won't mention your name, except it is so overtly, explicitly obvious to everyone who knows us that he knows exactly who the fuck. I mean, this is ridiculous. This is just like this is like dumb times ten. I want to go through this some more though. Here, you gotta come in here and see this, and <laughs> we're watching this, and it was almost three hours long, and I was like, and. I was like, wait a minute. Like at the end of it, I was like, holy oh, shit. I, so he submitted. He has submitted. He watched th the whole three hour video at the end of it. So we're going, we're going to, oh, this, come in and check it out. Oh, some funny video. He sat down and, dude, I guarantee you, his wife is screaming at him during that fucking video and probably wants to fuck me after the fact. That woman hates me and wants to fuck me more than anyone on the planet. And that will never happen. It's disgusting. But just bang, just bang her so you can make a video about it. No, it's not even worth it. That's gross, man. I ain't doing it. <laughs> it ain't worth it. It's tempting, but it ain't worth it. Ugh. I'd fucking, I'd, I'd vomit on a side just peak, man. It'd be That's funny great. just for his reaction. Uh, you can do it. I'll let you can do that. I ain't, I ain't jumping on that grenade, dude. You can <laughs> jump on that. Let's go a little more here. Let's see. Are we? We're married. Look at how uncomfortable this girl is. Over. This is defensive posturing by the girl in the pink. She's holding herself. She's like, who are, who are these girl? Who are these girls by there? They look like fucking just like, random skanks off the street in Miami. Like D list, <laughs> D list, like fucking uh, backup porno actors or some, actresses or some shit, single moms. Yeah, Alex, this is your town. I don't know, man, but they just like a random host of me. I've never seen any of these girls in my life. Yeah, they're just like random whatever. So we decided to jump on a plane, come down here to Miami, and uh, we're on our honeymoon. So uh, I no, the honeymoon will be in uh, late July. That's still ways out, Donovan. Your second, your second honeymoon as your second uh, anniversary coming up, Donovan. Yes. Wait, did you guys elope? We uh, listen. I, we were married before I even realized it. But there, I mean, it was it was such it was such compelling evidence. I mean, all sorts of. Photoshop and also, I mean, Photoshop. Uh, this is defamation. I'm ready to fucking get the, my attorney involved. I didn't Photoshop a single fucking thing. I should have Photoshopped his wife's ass crack out, I assume, I guess, for YouTube <laughs> or something. But there's nothing Photoshopped. What are, is this guy's accusing me of Photoshopping like 150 fucking screenshots? Are you kidding me? I, I, I had to fucking, this was like pulling teeth out going through this fucking thing. I hated doing this shit. Like it was kind of point, she, just, she, just, she should just own the situation. Like, yeah, you know what? I got married, blah, yeah. blah, blah. That's why I didn't tell you guys. That's the only way to go at this point. That's what a that's what a man would do. This guy's a beta male little boy. Like this is really fucking pathetic. It's just disturbing, man. 
Um, any further comments from you guys? What, what's his basically his the summary of his response is sarcasm, like poke fun even though it's all factual information, so that everyone yeah. thinks it's a big joke, and then um, and then claim that it's all not true, even though it's like it's yeah. like endless evidence. He calls it compelling evidence, and then he accuses me of Photoshop. Like, I encourage him to sue me on the video. If you guys remember that part, um, Alex, you saw the video. I, I'm yeah. dead serious. Pick up the phone, call call an attorney, you fat fuck, and sue me. I will counter sue you and ruin your fucking life. To the, I might do it anyway. At this point, this is pissing me off. I didn't Photoshop a single fucking thing. Fuck this loser, fucking fraud. He's he's basically committed to the end. I guess is what it is, which is not that surprising. Like Rollo and these guys, and then Cooper and Ryan Stone. They will never stop lying, like MLD especially. They will never, ever stop lying. It's a bottomless pit of bullshit. It's insane. Isn't there a way to pull up some public records, like something that's official, like 100%? I did, like his court, his court records, yeah. His wife's name oh, is yeah, Cynthia yeah. Ashlock. I Rolo's that. got his house foreclosure on public record. Yeah. ML, MLD, their Airbnb scam has evidence behind it. You, we, the, I think the move is putting these guys in jail, I and mean, when you can. Like yeah. like on uh, Coffeezilla's channel, he just got like his first guy he was attacking, like Jay Jay Man Mazzini or something, that was like defrauding people with with crypto investments and stuff like that. He th that guy's in jail now, nice. and like what Derek uh, Derek Moneyberg and Max are doing, RST Max Max like for, um, the fuck's it called uh, Freedom Business Mentoring. Those guys are committing fraud. They're like it, the alleged money laundering, ale alleged all kinds of laws being broken. Yep. High pressure sales tactics, coercive predatory lending. Uh, literally, Derek has this habit of like selling programs and then not not even providing the boot camp. Like what he what he did. Like let me explain this real quick. He has people sign up and then he says, "Oh, that's been canceled. You can either fly to Asia or take this program in like New York that's double the price. Those are your options." And so it's like it's like he's forcing them to pay more than they originally agreed on. Like the trip to Asia is expensive as fuck. So people end up just paying double going to the New York program. And then they get upsold on two more programs. The, the coaches, coaches that are like assisting the programs are just sales guys to upsell yeah. them on two more programs. So there's really no, no value whatsoever being taught about dating. And But he doesn't even provide the programs in a lot of cases. If the person's like, no, I don't want the New York program, the Asia program, they just get nothing. And they signed up to pay for a program. I talked to countless guys like, whatever, I just wrote that money off, whatever. I heard that tons of times. And I had an attorney contact me. He said, I've seen some of your Derek videos. He said, I, I want to put everybody's stories together and go after this guy. So that's what he's been collecting everyone's fucking stories. And then, you know, Derek's like knocking out walls in a penthouse with, with his whole scam operation. These guys think they're untouchable. Right. Yep. And, and oh, I'm public en public enemy number one. Well, now this is a lot bigger than just me. Now you have other big channels. You're on their radar. Now you have now you're on fucking attorneys radars. Yep. And so, you know, even if they fucking come after me, uh, they're, they're fucked either way. Right. So. Let that let them keep it up. They they think this is this is like a just like a free for all, right? Yeah. It's it's just a big joke all the way to the bank. And I and I heard from the inside they're they're purposely trying to get these guys to open up credit cards that approve anyone, and max them out and give all the money to them, and then those guys are, are, are like fucked for life. So they know those guys can't pay the money back. Yeah, yeah that's super fucked. That's super it's sick, fucked man. up. It's sick. So but that, uh, I, guess they, I think that's the solution that they can't fucking continue scamming from jail if they're yeah. if they're actually breaking laws. Yep. I think Donovan right. might have if if state attorneys get involved from states where it's criminal for false advertising, he could he could go to jail, I think, for what he's doing. That's a stretch. I mean, you need to get you know state attorneys involved, which is what I tried to do in New Jersey and Florida. I think in New Jersey and Florida it's a civil though, so he would just get fined. He's not gonna go to jail. But uh, dude, it's like five thousand dollars a fine, like ten thousand dollars a fine for every time you do this kind of shit. Every every time you committed fraud and shit. MLD almost went to jail for an Airbnb scam. And if, if anyone can uncover any of this this shit, who knows where the rabbit hole goes with the fucking children? Yeah. You know, then, know. then he'll be fucking rotting in in jail, and and he'll have his legacy products out there that are ripoffs. I think we got to keep the pressure on, like you're saying, for something to happen. You know, either they get fucking just they just collapse, they go bankrupt for the people filing chargebacks or refunds because they're getting defrauded. Or they end up in jail or something like that, or state attorneys get involved and stuff. I think it needs to start happening. Like there needs to be hopefully a state attorney that gets involved in this whole fucking community and starts outing these people for frauds. Because they're doing yeah, you're right. It's all kinds of super sketchy bullshit. It's manipulative. It's manipulative and it's sick and it's twisted, man. Preying on hurt wounded people, wounded men. It's you know what you know what we need a state attorney who's a fan of one of our channels. Well, I, I have I have that. I, I won't I won't mention who, but there, there's a guy that's like he watches a lot of the this type of content, but he's also very good at defending um, <clears throat> the rights of the consumer. And this and th th these these are like 
it's it's not hard to win something like this when you have countless people being defrauded yeah. and countless people being taken advantage of. But as a side note, I just got emailed recently the the kind of the origin of where Myron came from is he was in Brandon Carter's. Remember Brandon Carter's the the one the the fitness coach who was with Derek Moneyberg in a bunch of photos, and they're like great buddies, even though Derek's a huge scammer. He took Brandon Carter's like high ticket whatever like coaching course and then started his fitness brand, even though he, it's all generic fucking bullshit advice. And then he's just riding that train. They're just like leveraging like TikTok and like some other things and just doing mass podcasts to like rapidly grow a subscriber base. And then he brings on this uh, Fresh Prince CEO. These names are so fucking dumb. Anyway, Fresh Prince CEO. Yep. And, and he's wearing CEO chains and going next to like rented cars and, and airplanes and stuff and jets. And that this guy, like four months ago, was working for Wix.com just in like social media type stuff. And he only probably d- like ended it in December 2020 because he came on the on the fresh and fit bullshit. But I bet he still works works for Wix, right? And and these guy and he has no credentials whatsoever. But it just goes to show you you can take someone like literally off the street and turn him into a guru or an expert. And all these people are like swept into the thing, like, oh my God, like I want to be like fresh prince CEO. And, and did you see? Can we show his his wife real quick? The, the yeah, wife he had. Fresh. Did you watch? Did you I see my fresh it. prints? Okay, check I've out. Check. I've skimmed through it. Let me see if I could find it. It's in my. It's in that, that playlist. Or if you just type "fresh prints," uh, it's gonna take a minute. Uh, it's gonna let's bring up Will here. Smith. Type "fresh prints," fresh. John Anthony. <laughs> fresh prints of Bel Air. This one. Yeah, this one. If you if you scroll like. Here's a link. Uh, maybe like halfway or you'll see like a you'll see a picture of his chick a little bit more go on a little bit further um let's see blurred out thing no i had no there she is this one yeah that that was fresh prince ceo's wife the other the the duo from from uh fresh and fit damn that's a big that's a big woman this was his wife and he had i had to blur it because they put privacy complaints on it yeah yeah, that's fine um but they, but this was this was who he was married to, has a kid with, and he's running around claiming twelve hundred lay count now, which is a. This full is like a. Kid. This is like maybe a four or a three. Like this is pretty rough. Yeah, this is shit. Yeah. Yep, yeah, and just because he can go on camera with a CEO necklace on, in a CEO shirt, yep. and Myron, like look at the, the that face of Myron laughing. That's the face of a guy that doesn't know shit about any of the stuff he's talking about. I know. That's laughing all the way to the bank, hey, just like MLB. Yeah. I had MLD's best friend uh, email me uh, tons of stuff, uh, his former best friend. And he said, MLD literally told me that, that he just wanted to do a whole money grab. And, and just instead of dr- he was driving a cab and teaching English and wasn't paying that well, why not just be a fake coach and just take people that have, have systems and put them into his, into his own products, repackage them, do, do some hot dude party stuff. You get to be a hot dude general, bro. Hot dude general in there, man. Hot, hot dude, dude army. Dude. It's yeah, the names alone are insane. Like I would never want to be a part of a hot dude army. That's like the gayest thing I can think of. I like women. I like putting my dick in vaginas. You know, like this is not hot dude army is not for me. I guess you seen the two the trans stuff. They're doing trans stuff now in the freshman fit. You seen that shit? No. no uh, oh, you got to see that dude. Yeah, Black Pill Truth will have that. Hang on. Hang on. What do you mean, like, like talking about banging trans chicks? <laughs> dude, it's it's basically like uh, they're basically they're advocating for like banging trannies and stuff and banging dudes off tinder no i, way. Swear, I really? swear to god i swear to god dude you got to follow black pill truth man this is one of the best channels on youtube i swear Wait, dude he just put up a video yeah. nine minutes ago with us this guy's <laughs> on it man he's just savage i don't know who this dude is but i like this guy this guy's savage man uh let me see if i type trans stuff see what pulls up Tran. Nah. Uh, i don't know to be honest with you. there's so many fucking videos like this is a new channel too he just put out but basically, if you look through it, you'll find, I think, the tranny video, the trans video on it. And uh, it's fucked, man. It's them promoting gay stuff. And, like, they call it game axing or something. What's, what's uh, the uh, quick synopsis of the video? I don't know. I don't remember. I've honestly, I've watched so many fucking videos on this shit lately. I don't even know what to tell you. Like, I just, you have to go watch it. But it's weird. It's, there's gay stuff they're promoting. It's trans stuff. Um, even with the Cooper and Rolo did it the other day. Where is it? Uh it's like a fucking maze trying to get through this, honestly, guys. But there's one where here it is, this one. Rolo Tomasi and Rich Cooper take interest in Sterling Cooper OnlyFans. So basically, this dude posts pictures of his dick on OnlyFans for men. He talks about this in the video. We can go through it. And you see Rolo like have these little smirks on his face and Cooper, like they're almost into it. Like they're gonna do it for money. 
There's all kinds of shit like this on Black Belt Truth, Truth Show, man. They, they scan through these fucking hour-long, three-hour-long live streams, right? And they find these little nuggets of this insane shit these guys say. This is this just channels a gold mine of insane shit from the manosphere. I swear to God. This one we can get into it. Let's see how long it is. It's only one minute. Let's see. For only fans page. Um, you've got this like pricing uh, model for fifty seventy five, uh, depending on what you send them. How many fans do you have on that, by the way? Like, uh, where do they show that? The biggest you can hide it, or you can like you can okay. make it hidden or not. So for me, the biggest I've had is like I've been really pushing it, probably two fifty three hundred people at a time. And and who who follows you? Like, is it is it gay guys? Is it couples? Is it women? Like, it's, it's gay with with guys only fans. It's gay dudes. Gay dudes. Okay, so they have thirsty gay dudes that are mm. throwing money at you for mm. personal. Okay, got it. Or like, I take I take a photo with my pants down. I take a video of my pants down. That kind of thing. And then yeah, that's it. It's like for that. It's okay. it's this is so fucking a lot weird. Of, uh, I think a lot of straight dudes who are like relatively good looking. Could yeah. make a lot of money off this if they if that's what they wanted to do. <laughs> what they want to do yeah. look, at, look at Rolo <laughs> Brennan. Look at him. Look at him. He's all happy. Oh, you can show your dick to dudes to make money. Oh, let me get him. <laughs> I mean, this is so. It's, I'm telling you, man. There's like they, they call it gay maxing and shit. I don't even know what the terms are half the time. It just keeps what going. Is, what is rich, is rich wearing like a winter coat or something in the house? Why is he all that? He always has like blue fucking shit in his glasses. I heard he's getting fat now and stuff. I think it's why he's looking. He looks kind of like he's getting fatter, like a Santa Claus thing going on here. Yeah, if you look in his face, yeah. Yeah, I don't know, man. Like it's so. Well, dude, you like every, your best. Go ahead. everyone says Rich Cooper. Like, think about it. Think about it. you get divorced by a girl. It's like fucking old and, and not even attractive anymore. You're paying child support and alimony. He's yeah, been like thrown around by other single moms. I don't know much about this guy, but like everyone in the comments just says he just like complains about single moms, especially in the past. It was oh, and in yeah. his book. I'm gonna do a video about like some takeaways from his book. It's like him bitching about getting like fucked over by single moms. Yep. I'm I'm sure he has like no girls in his life. He's sitting at home probably eating ice cream, just yep. flexing, just flexing he, online. He's had a girlfriend for years. He doesn't bang any woman, as far as I know. I mean that could have changed recently, but he doesn't dude, he doesn't bang. I, I know some shit about him. Like I don't even I can't even say I'm in video, but like it's fucked. Like he sucks with women, right? Now he's tall and stuff, and he, he's on TRT, like he's not in bad shape. So he can probably bumble his way through some things. I don't doubt that. But he has zero game, like zero. Doesn't have any understanding of it, nothing. He had zero before finding the red pill. He hasn't developed any game since then. He doesn't know how to do any of it, like cold approaching. Zero understanding of it. And then, yeah, and then they're going to talk shit on me, who, uh, yeah. me who, who's banged tons of chicks and shown proof of it. And they're going to say, oh, look at this guy. Why can't he be like us just marrying threes and just checking out of the game? This is real touchy. <laughs> <laughs> they're savage in the chat, man. Oh, we got a super chat I got to get to before we roll up here. Uh, let's see. Here we go. I worked as a fraud auditor, both public and private, before I started my own business, and there are quite a few red flags I saw with them. Just need to wait and see. Truth is like the sunlight. It will always shine through. Yeah, This guy's right, man. It's taking time, you know, but it's good. We're all doing good work with this stuff. Alex, you got to get on it, man. We need more roast, man. You got to follow like, John Anthony in the footsteps here. He's a good example. He's a good role model, John Anthony. Yeah. Well, that's why I want to have you on my channel, man. I want to do the uh, – we'll explore, yeah. uh, ex unveil it to my audience. We'll do like the top 10 scammers yeah. in the atmosphere. Yeah, yeah, more specific. Yeah, I'm down. Yeah, there's so many. I mean, it's a fucking. Alex, I Alex like stuff. deep down though. I think I think you're like too. You're like a little bit more like nice, like internally nice. Where you can't, you gotta like get like that. Like, you gotta get the bulldog out. Yep. It, it just comes down to who annoys me. Like who who crosses. Like I I haven't had too many of these guys like go after me personally. If someone goes after me, I have no problem. Well, Myron, Myron, Myron's trying to step up. You could take him down now on your channel. Well, let me talk about this. Like, too because... what, what, like yeah, but at the end of the day, what he really do? He just like kind of try to talk tough on the street and then he called me a few hours later and said you know he didn't mean it is he scared of you probably That's i don't why. know if he, i don't know if he's scared of me but he definitely doesn't want me to like talk about him and make content about him because he knows that if i do that that'll be really bad for their brand is he scared of you i mean you guys look anybody in the manuscript can make videos about me all day long i don't give a fuck i don't have anything to hide like i've my yeah, life is my life yeah, I, for me. yeah it's the same way for me. People, the only people, the only way people are able gonna be able to put shit on me is by fabricating stuff, which is what they're trying to do to Coffeezilla. Yeah. It's what they're trying to do on Reddit. People are people are just like trying to pollute, you know, spread spread false information around. And that's different when they're making up like explicit lies about you. And that's kind of what Donovan tried to do. And that's that's also pissed me off. It wasn't just attacking me and like you know shit talking. It was like these lies and shit. I'm like, nah, this guy's dead. Because I knew he was gonna keep going. Right? You do it once. Let's see if they do it again. Did it again. Oh, it's gonna keep going. It was escalating basically more and more the one over time. I'm like, no, this has to stop. I'm gonna drop the hammer on your fucking head, which is what I did. 
Um, man, there's so much Maybe in the chat. Drop the hammer. Yeah. Santa Claus and cars. That's pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we got to wrap what up. It, we got to get back. Someone, someone pays Rich Cooper 2K an hour, okay, to Santa Claus. What, what are they hoping to, to get from that? To I'll learn about he, Red Pill he, Theory? He, yeah, it's mostly data. There's videos exposing them on, oh, that, you know, uh, Looks Max did a video. I watched it last night. You heard of Looks Max? Yeah. He did a 90 minute video on Rich Cooper. It's really good. It's really good. It's kind of like mine. It's really long, but it's more informal. But it's really good. He goes through different videos and shit. He's very specific with it, like detailed. Kind of like you're doing too on your stuff. And he gets into the dating coaching element of Rich Cooper's $2,000 an hour coaching. And he actually compares it then. He shows how fucking absurd this is. And even a high end attorney is like maybe $700 an hour. You know, therapist, you know, a top end doctor is like 800 an hour. Exactly. That's exactly what he gets into. Where, where, where is he claiming to have these credentials from if he hasn't banged a lot of girls? Where, and what kind of strategy is he giving them? It's, it's he just preys on, dude, he just preys on random guys on YouTube who find his shit looking for these topics. It's predatory. It's guys who are just oblivious to the manosphere. They don't know anything. Rich Cooper picks up Rolla Tomasi's book and reads it fucking line item. I've seen him do this. It's insane. He admitted it to another speaker who called him on it back in like 2018 or 29. Yeah, 2018. Yeah. I'm not going to name drop the name of that speaker, but the dude, he actually, the speaker called him on it and he's like, yeah, that's how I do it. And the speaker was like, God damn, like you ain't even going to lie about it to my face. You just own that you're stealing from Rolla's shit and you're just reciting it for $2,000. That's what Ryan does hour. too. Isn't that what Ryan Stone does too? Yeah. People that's why they all, that's how they suck. They all suck Rolla's dick. That's how they do it, man. They all suck Rolla's dick. That's why I call them the digital daddy, these guys. He's the they should have fans and suck Rolla's dick on camera. <laughs> Rolla really likes that idea. They should. They should. But the, it basically, Rolla is like the intellectual fraud father kingpin of this crap. And he just, it's almost like a, like a priesthood or like a church. So you have like the Pope and the bishops and archbishops <laughs> and all this shit. And priests, like the fresh and fit guys, like low level priests, they're just kind of losers <laughs> setting up these new churches, right? But then you have the bishops with bigger channels that suck Rolla's dick, like Rich Cooper and uh, I don't know, other, you know, other channels that are big. I don't even know off the top of my head, but other channels that support Rolla, right? It's all a fucking game to Rolla to play this Pope, this fake fraudulent fraud father Pope, the Pope father of this red this red pill garbage he makes up. It's all fake. And, he, and he's stuff. totally fine with, with letting all these scammers push his shit because yes. he makes money. Yes, it's a suck. It's no, Rolo is usually more clever about it. He does some affiliate stuff, and mostly it's just about his book. It's all to promote his book, 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 book indefinitely. Yeah. He's always encouraging guys to start channels, not to spread the red pill truth, to spread his fucking book to make more fucking money. He doesn't give a fuck about any of these issues. By the way, you mentioned they hate women. These guys, they don't just hate women. The real secret is that they hate men. They hate men. That's why they scam them. They hate masculinity. They hate men who are masculine. They hate men in general. People don't understand that. They bitch about do they hate women or do they not? Even the feminists go after them for that, right? That's fine. They do hate women, number one. That's the fucking truth behind all the bullshit. Number two, they hate men. That's why they fucking scam them. If you're going to rip men off who are hurt and wounded and looking for good advice, like legit advice from real men qualified to give it, you're a fucking piece of shit. You hate men. That's the only way you can have that level of fucking you know, shit on people like that. These, these aren't general sales, right? The, Rolo isn't selling in you know, the Donovan Sharp, the Sharp Mama. He's not selling womanese to like a general uh, population of people. It's to men specifically hurt wounded men who are looking for advice on these specific issues. He's preying on men because he hates men like Rolo because they're not masculine. They're a bunch of mama's boys and shit. So they have like this resentment towards men and masculinity and they hate that's it. Why, yeah, that's why it really strikes the nerve when you have someone like piece of shit Derek Moneyberg where he's literally yep. um, like isolated, like he's preying off their insecurities. So he has them go on one side. Whoever doesn't want to buy more of his stuff at the end of the programs, he has them go on one side and says, oh, all these people are losers. All these people are never going to be anything. Like, or they, or they, when they try to leave the room during the talks, the big talks, whole single people out. And it's, li and it's literally like it, the message is basically, if you don't want to pay me more money for my full load of bullshit, I'm going to make you feel horrible about yourself and try to like ostracize you in front of everyone so that you'll feel bad enough so that you will pay me money. That's literally, that's what he's trying to do. Look at this guy. If Rolo put a wig on, he would look like my dead grandma. <laughs> Uh, I got to go soon, guys. We'll close out with uh, some. Yeah, I, have two, I have two girls waiting. I was like, I'll be an, an hour long. Good. Fuck yeah. Yeah, we got the roll. Oh, I'm going to bounce. Let me, I got to get going. So let me pull this shit off. Um, I appreciate you guys joining me today on the Redman group. It's almost been two hours. I got to bounce. Uh, let's, let's do it again sometime. Let's shout our, our channels real quick. Uh, my yeah, name is John Anthony Lifestyle. Um, my focus is practical, no BS, no fluff, uh, no abstract woo woo, cock sucking bullshit, uh, dating advice. I give away a lot of free value on the channel, probably way too much. And <clears throat> I run an eight-week mentorship, PlatinumDatingSystem.com, where you can get on a free 30-minute call with me to discuss how I can get you very good very fast. But that's it for me.
Yep. Mine Alex. is playing with fire. We do mainly online game, but we do a lot more than that. So practical strategies for texting girls, getting hot girls straight over your place from Tinder and whatnot. So a lot of good stuff there. Check it out. All right. Sounds good, guys. Appreciate you both tuning in. This has been episode 137 of the Red Man Group, President Dream, Judge Dream. And uh, it's been a lot of fun, guys, both of you. Everybody in the chat, too. Um, I'll see you guys next week, most likely. Saturdays at usually 1130 a.m. Sometimes I schedule it later. Alex, let's do a stream. John, I'll talk to you guys sure. soon, for sure. That's more good, man. Thanks for having me. Yeah, Thanks for having me. All right, brother.